What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Smoking Tire Podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by Off the Record. Love Off the Record. They take care of the things I need taken care of. And what am I talking about? I'm talking about tickets, of course. In fact, I got a text message from my sister in law down in San Diego who uh, was very excited about Off the Record because they made it go away. Sent me that screenshot. Your ticket has been dismissed. Love that screenshot. You get that email and it says, warning, do not reply to this email. You've received a message from your attorney. Your ticket has been fully dismissed. Thank you, Off the Record. Never plead guilty to a moving violation. Use Off the Record instead. All you have to do is go to offtherecord.com slash TST or use code TST10 on the Off the Record app and Off the Record will fight that ticket on your behalf and help get those points off your record. In fact, you don't pay them if they don't get the points off your record. And just remember, the points that come with a ticket, they follow you around. They affect your insurance rates. They cost you money. They could potentially, depending on what you do for a living, even affect your livelihood. So always fight your tickets with Off the Record. Code TST10 on the Off the Record app or offtherecord.com slash TST. They'll connect you with a qualified attorney in the jurisdiction where you got that ticket, and they'll fight that ticket on your behalf. Never plead guilty. It's Off the Record. You know what's up. All right, folks, today, Johnny Lieberman from Motor Trend and the Inevitable Podcast, plus, of course, Spike's Car Radio, is in the building. Haven't caught up with him in a while, but it's our quarterly uh, fight session slash therapy session, and now he's on the uh, the weight loss train with me, so I'm sure we'll be comparing strategies. It's Johnny Lieberman in studio. Welcome to the Smoking Tire Podcast. Oh, I'm, I'm like, all about rubber straps. I love a rubber strap, but I also love a deployant buckle. Yeah, well, I'm, I need I'm a just, little of both in my life. I well, so I got another Zin. I got um, the Chrono, and and I've never had. I, that's why I, I said I challenge you. I sent him a picture of it. Yeah. I said challenge you to give me a good rubber strap because uh-huh. I always go back to the bracelet. Yeah, but just I think it's because I'm well, you're hairy too, but I just hate. My wrist hair is getting pulled out. And Some bracelets are really poorly designed and yeah. do a lot of yanking. Yeah, so I yeah. just rubber straps for me is the way to go. I and think I'm like, my thick Arab hair resists <laughs> the yanking ah. better than your your my, your my, fo- soft, my European <laughs> soft, Ashkenazi your, hair, <laughs> soft Jew hair. That's right. Oh, yeah. what a topical thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's our Israel Palestine commentary right. for the show. <laughs> Arm hair showdown. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, so yeah, Mark's Mark's uh, he's 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 his old team. Seems cool. Yeah, we just, I got to get him on the on this game. Uh, welcome. Hey, nice man. to see you, buddy. Good to see you. How you looking doing? looking good. Your program program's going well. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm down like many weights. Are uh, you looking at a scale? Yeah. Do you need the scale? No, but it, I'm curious. Mm. You know, scale but it, makes me mad. I don't look at the scale. So I just got to like I I didn't how do I put this like you know a lot of people are like oh I started losing weight because I wasn't feeling good I felt great I was you know I was two hundred fifty one pounds fat I was feeling luxurious yeah like and DJ warm Cal- in the winter remember when someone asked DJ Khaled how come you don't lose weight he goes I don't lose I only win <laughs> God damn it oh, that's good. I hate DJ Khaled but that's I fucking love DJ that's Khaled. A <laughs> <laughs> no, but it was like it was like it was really. I was a Goodwood. And it was really hot, and you know, you're Schwitzen. Yeah. And somebody was like, "Dude, you stink." So, you know, <laughs> a, a female journalist friend of ours. No uh, way. Was yeah. it Lynn? It was Lynn. <clears throat> no comment. And um, <laughs> Lynn. Um, and uh, I was just kind of like, uh, and, I, and I, I saw a picture, and it was kind of. Was, I liked the picture, except that I just looked really fat. <laughs> and then this dude, Will. Have I been there many, if, many? Times. If, if I, yeah, <laughs> if I can shout out uh, Will Vargas, uh, he just reached out and he's like, "Hey man, you're looking kind of fat." Um, <laughs> I like when they do that. That's yeah. helpful. Yeah, but you know, glad you noticed. I, yeah, hey, <laughs> but he goes, "This is what I do." He's like, "I, I, I he specializes in men over 35 who travel." Ugh. And I'm I said, in there. dude, I'm, I'm like, in there. Yes, and he's a nutritionist or a trainer or both? Both. Okay. Yeah, yeah. He's kind of scrawny. He's like Zach size. So I don't really trust him because it's like, yeah, oh, you can do a lot of pull ups and you weigh 160 pounds. Like, yeah. like <laughs> that's it. But it's like those guys I see in fucking Pilates. I want to crush their skulls because they're too goddamn good at it. Yeah. But like, you know, he's what I like about him is 
I'll send him a video of me lifting something. And he's he's not he's not in it to make me feel good. He's like, no, that's totally wrong. Do it this way. Yeah. And I need that. It's Does good. he not come to the crib or work out? Do you work? Is he in L.A.? Do he you work in out Vegas. To, oh, no, so no, no, you don't. No, no. You do no workouts together. But he's got a very good app. He's got a lot of all okay. kinds of stuff. We have a meeting every week. I send him pictures of my naked, horrible body every week. Do you? Yeah, How well, naked. I'm wearing boxers. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, mm. or, or archived. Or, they are. <laughs> <laughs> I better be nice to this guy. <laughs> that How, first week. How's the security of his server? <laughs> yeah, that that first week is. Uh, it's all on Snapchat. And you see yeah, yeah. screenshot, screenshot. It's a little vulnerable, a little vulnerable. But but I'm down like men over thirty five who travel dot com. <laughs> it's getting out totally, totally populated. Totally. Actually, it, it would just be like white bears. <laughs> <laughs> Polar bears. Polar bears. Yeah, Polar thank you. Bears. Polar bears. Com. Polar bears. Yeah. Um, seeking cubs. No. Um, <laughs> but I'm down like over about, I think this morning, like, like 12, 13 pounds. That's but, pretty good. But I have two think, months? No, 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 like five weeks. But okay. I think I'm, I've lost more fat than right. that, but I've been really, I feel, packing on muscle. Like have you I'm, done the, uh, the analysis yet? No, he keeps bugging me to That's do that. That's actually the move. That's why I don't like scales because they fucking lie to you. Oh, the DEXA scan thing? Yeah. Mm-hmm. When, I, the, when I lost 100 pounds that time in 2006 and seven. And I went from 340 pounds to 240 you pounds. You weighed 340? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What? Yeah. When I was 24. That's yeah. enormous. It wasn't good. I mean, it, it like, dude, I, I <laughs> <Wow>. fucking... Bro, <laughs> Sorry, well, no, he's like... right. It wasn't. <laughs> but also, like, I hide weight yeah. so oh, well. I weighed 239 pounds. Yeah. If you looked yeah. at my fat pictures from... Well, <laughs> any of them. But if you if you guessed my weight from any p- photo in history of me, almost universally somebody would guess 30 to 40 pounds under the actual same. number. Oh, 100% Always, same. always. I, but like, when I, I, yeah, go, go ahead. I was just, what I was, saved I was in, me when I did yeah, the 100-pound yeah. thing was weekly DEXA scan. Right. Because it was like, okay, well, you lost – Three pounds of fat, and you gained half a pound of muscle, and this bit of water doesn't matter, and your bone weight right. is constant. And it was so motivating because if it was just the scale, I would only have that one bit of information. It was cl- crucial. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not using the scale. I'm just using the scale to like make sure, you know, like. I'm not popping up. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, that, that's sure. all it is. And it, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong yeah. with the scale. Yeah. I It would drive me insane. And I can't do it. I haven't looked at a scale since March. Right. Since my horrible physical where I, my doctor said, whatever you've been doing for the last three years, don't do that anymore. Ah. Uh, and But I've lost four inches on my waist. That's great. So my scale is my belt. Right. And no, my, that, my belt is happy with me. And that's what I'm saying, whereas but, I, my, my weight loss is yeah. kind of down to like maybe like a half pound a week. But I can tell my, my yeah. pants are looser, yeah. belt tightening, you know what I mean? Yeah. But also like I'm just my strength is coming back. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, but traveling say, fucks you up, man. So bad. I've done three trips since I started the program, and it's just the diet. And I mean, I blew off a dinner at Rensport, and I just went by myself, and I was like, I'm going to get, oh, halibut. You yeah. Know? And I ordered the halibut, and it comes on a plate of pasta. <laughs> and I literally ate the halibut, uh, yeah. sucked down one noodle, yeah. and then put my napkin and mashed yeah. the pasta down and like, shoved it <laughs> and ran good, out of the restaurant. That's a good move. Yeah. I was like, you know, and then, you know, then you go suck down a protein bar or something horrible. But I was going to say the uh, the weight thing, the, the looking or being heavier than you look. Yeah. So uh, my wife and I were on the boardwalk in, uh, in uh, Wildwood, New Jersey, and they have those guess your weight. And if, if you know how it works, they have a scale built right into- next to it. They have a hang yourself one where it's like you guess your weight and then you just get in the noose. Right. <laughs> That's it. But but so I know how I know how that works. My, yeah. my wife's a circus performer. Right? It's all rigged. I know. You know anyways, the way to de-rig it is you don't stand where they want you to stand. And uh-huh. then they, they, they can't tell your weight because uh-huh. they have someone in their ear saying he weighs 222 pounds. And they go, 222. No, it's, it's a two-person job, huh? Yeah. Mm. But so I didn't stand on Fucking it. Fucking Wizard of Oz bullshit. Yeah. I, <laughs> <laughs> and at the time I weighed it like, I don't know what I weighed, let's say 240. And yeah. she guessed like 190. Yeah. And I was like, and I got on the actual scale and, and they're I was like, off by 40 pounds. Yeah, you know? yeah. No, so, if, even if people like, even if you look at a, like me at my thinnest, you'd probably look at it and go, oh, that's like a, like a 200, 210 pound. And I was 245. Yeah. And but, that's but, like the light skinniest I've ever been. But you can't hide 340. No, no. Nor was I at the time. <laughs> okay. But if, uh, 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 but if you like, 
like if you looked at a photo of it then, you'd probably say two seventy five or two eighty. Sure. Just like that's just like I'm I'm dense in there, no, so saying, fucking look, I hide it well. I, I remember one of, one of my favorite books uh, or a series of books is the American Trilogy by James Elroy, and there's this guy uh, Pete, um, I think it's Bondurant. Um, French Canadian guy, and in the book, he's like, he's absolutely massive, six foot six, two hundred and twenty pounds, and it's because a hundred and fifty pound guy is writing it, and yeah, two twenty yeah, yeah, sounds yeah. really big. Six foot six <laughs> and two twenty, you're it's, like a it's, stick. <laughs> you're, That's yeah. crazy. Well, or you're jacked, and you're like a running back or something. Yeah, like that. a running back would be six one. Yeah, and, six and, six and, and two fifty. You're yeah. a stick. That's true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Six, no, again, six, skinny uh, people have no concept of weight. Yeah, they don't, they don't get it. But it was so, it always bugged me where he's like six six two twenty, no. and it's like uh, no, dude, I three twenty. Yeah. yeah, I'm doing. Uh, uh, I don't I mean. Uh, we're uh, the upcoming issue of Road and Track is. Uh, I'm trying to do a story on uh, EV toll, the electric vertical takeoff and landing, basically drones you ride in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had a guy from Joby on the Motor Trend podcast, and yeah. uh, and so uh, uh, you know, I was talking to their person today about what, which which what company. Can, they just renamed it shit. Who's backing them? Hyundai, Toyota? I don't I don't know. Okay, it's um, a fine. It's one of them. So shit. It's, it's it's a it's an emerging tw- trillion dollar industry. Yeah, yeah, and it's 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 like personal toys at this point. It's very right. expensive, you know, personal drones that one yeah, yeah. person rides in. But they but but I said, you know, about halfway through the conversation, I said, you know, I'd like to go up and what and I, and the person I'm on the phone with, I have never met. Right. Never ne- you know. And I go, you know, I got to ask, what's the weight limit? Yeah. And she goes, it's 200 pounds. And I go, well, <laughs> there's not even a chance. I was like, I was like, and she's like, oh, what do you weigh? And I'm like, I don't know, but like best guess right now, 260. Right. And, and she's like, yeah, that's not going not gonna to cut it. And I'm like, I don't even want to get close to the upper limit of this thing. So I may actually have to, like, reassign the story to, like, Raf Orlov or someone like Perfect. Or He's a buck 40. Yeah. Like, yeah, like someone little on our staff <laughs> might get to go fly in this fucking thing. And they said I could do everything else. I can use the sim and, like, learn how to fly it. I can visit their factory and meet all the people and blah, and see it flying, blah, blah, blah. But, yeah, hard hard 200. There's this, the, uh, there's this uh, company, Joby. Uh, they're in California. Apparently, they're going to put their factory in Monterey or Salinas or something like that. Interesting. And Toyota's going to build the factory and uh. back and anyways but yeah uh, the guy was saying that it's going to be a four person drone uh-huh. and I was like how big are these people he yeah was, he was well 800 pounds I'm like oh, so it's a three person drone <laughs> yeah. you know four Europeans <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah but it's just I mean it's you know what's this I, one Joby oh yeah so this one the the Joby one looks like it 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 do the motors tilt? Yeah. Yeah, so it yeah. takes off vertically and then sort of turns into, like, a plane. Yeah, so it can go 200 miles an hour. And yeah. the idea of this is imagine, like, an Uber where right. you want to go, like, downtown L.A. to Long Beach in five minutes and it right. costs you 100 bucks. Right. The one that I was looking at was more of, like, almost like a flying, uh, I want to say motorcycle, but it's, oh, it's enclosed. One it's one person. Ah, it's one person. Yeah, yeah. It can be transportation, but it's also kind of a toy. This For thing's one, pretty One billionaire slick. to play with. So so, so the Joby model is it has a pilot. You'll never yeah. fly it. Oh, okay. It's a pilot. Six um, motors. So if like two go out, it can still land itself. Four batteries. So if three fail, it still has enough to like. I take land. issue with the route they've done their car drive to JFK Airport. Look at this route they've gotten. On oh, the yeah, the RD, I take issue Look too. Look how these yeah. fucking guys are driving to JFK they right now. They have tunnels that go under the river. <laughs> that animation. Yeah. Look, that drive to JFK <laughs> sucks balls. Sucks. But someone went, okay. What is the worst possible? Yeah, how do we make it the farthest? <laughs> well, because the, the problem is that it's we not just far. We swing by at all. Howard Beach on the way to JFK. I mean, the problem is it's not far to JFK, yeah. except that it takes an hour and forty-five yeah, to go yeah, eight yeah, miles. Yeah. yeah, it's the worst. Yeah, I mean, the, the Joby would still beat it in time. Oh just, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but yeah. they could be honest about no, the annoyance of going to JFK in this animation. That's silly. I, I mean, <laughs> look, they're they're in Monterey. What do you want? But uh, <laughs> it seems like cool tech, and they're claiming two thousand twenty-five. They should be showing uh, from the quay. To Laguna Seca. Yeah, exactly. Know your audience. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, again, like, it I was, looks pretty cool, though. Was yeah. this, did you say Toyota's doing this? Toyota's one? backing them. They have a ton of backers. I mean, yeah. you, can, you can dig into the website. But, like, you know, 200 miles an hour means, like, LA to Santa Barbara. Yeah. In not a lot of time. Yeah, you're cruising. And if you have two people plus luggage, that's right. like, and if, if that's, let's say it's two, 300 bucks, like, Hmm. You know, that's that's an interesting thing. Yeah, yeah. If you it's know. like just 
if it's cheaper than a helicopter, way cheaper. Yeah, that's money. And the other thing is, unlike a helicopter, and they they have a whole somewhere on the website they talk about how. Um, quiet it is but it's like an order of magnitude quieter than a helicopter yeah because I, I i learned about this the multi-rotor small ones are way quieter than the than a giant helicopter yeah rotor. and they had a whole you know reason why it was science and all that good stuff i was like okay i you know but they they had a, on this the guy showed me a video or that's on the website where they they show like uh you know like a cessna mm-hmm. a piper cub a helicopter and then one of these and you know they have it's, it's same cameras yeah and it's you know. much quieter wait it's, yeah ten times quieter yeah so, yeah yeah so it's, well, it's kind of cool I'm, it I'm does looking seem forward cool. to it I don't yeah I don't think we're gonna see quote flying cars anytime soon but drone you know technology applied upscaled to something that can carry a few humans is pretty awesome yeah and, and you call it on your phone and the other thing is because they're pretty light you don't need to like reinforce uh, a roof of a building so anywhere that right. kind of has a normal roof oh, that can yeah. hold an suv suddenly now so many ha- buildings have suvs on their roofs no, i'm kidding well, Part- you know parking I mean. garages yeah, but like and whatnot. your roof for instance if you wanted to you probably could i had to fucking reinforce my yeah. roof for if I ever wanted to add solar panels, they made me pre-reinforce the roof. You should for have that. added solar panels, but it's not. I've done the math. It's not. Um, oh, you don't have enough. It's not that big of a building, right, right. so it's not really worthwhile. Well, yeah. now you can land a, a, a uh, now evil. I can just paint a fucking <laughs> target on there, and yeah. we're good to go. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Guys, got to take a quick break from the action for today's sponsor, NASCAR, and uh, they are a big sponsor of us, and we really appreciate it. NASCAR's 75th anniversary season has undoubtedly lived up to the hype. We've had awesome finishes, breakout seasons, and unexpected results by some of the top drivers on the grid, and it is not over yet. For the remaining field of eight playoff contenders, it all comes down to Martinsville, because a win here launches you to the championship in Phoenix. Drivers have taken on super speedways, tri-ovals, road courses, even the streets of Chicago this season, but if they want to punch their ticket to the championship, they'll have to conquer the short track in NASCAR Martinsville Speedway. This half mile of mayhem will put drivers to the test as they battle in tight quarters for 500 miles of action-packed short track racing. It's make or break time for those looking to secure their spot in the championship four at Phoenix next weekend. Invite over some friends Flip on the TV and tune in to watch the NASCAR Cup Series Playoffs Elimination Race presented by Xfinity at Martinsville, Sunday, October 29th, 2 p.m. Eastern on NBC. Um, <laughs> wow, good times. So anyway, cars. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, cars, yeah. How's cars going? <laughs> They're going. Yeah. Cars are going. Cars are going. Cars yeah. are going. Cars I've, are going. I've, uh, I've enjoyed some. I've not enjoyed others. What have you not enjoyed? We talked about it last show, but I had the the M8 competition uh-huh. last week that I didn't like so much. Yeah, BMW can get the suspensions it was real wrong it was on full those. of rocks. Suspension so, was full of rocks. If you look at the competition, which is everybody else, everybody else either has air springs yeah. or Magna Ride. Yeah, BMW is just we have steel springs and you know just regular dynamic dampers. Yeah, and um, X6M, M5M, uh, Comp Comp. Um, this one, they're, they 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 ride terribly. They're really it was brutal. Wait, what is yeah. their what is their adaptive damper tech? Is it just the it's valve just the that basic rotates? Valve shock. Just yeah, a, yeah. just a traditional one. But 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 I think it's their their when they go from an M5 to an M5 comp or an M8 to an M8 comp. Yeah, they make I think it they, stiffer. They stiffen the springs like mm-hmm. crazy. Mm-hmm. I don't think the dampers really change that much. But the I just think the spring rates are. Brutal. Yeah. And so it, it was that, and it had those carbon buckets, which in an M3, all right, I kind of get it. But in an M8, it's like, this is a big luxury car. What are we doing here? Yeah. So. I mean, again, if you live in Angeles, Chris. Right. <laughs> but when, great. It, when yeah. it comes to, I, I took this thing on a, on a the Hudson Valley road trip oh, with yeah. Road and Track, which the roads were pretty good. It's funny you say that because the last time I drove an M5 comp was you gave me the roads to drive in upstate New York oh, yeah. around Lime Rock. And How were was, the roads? Well, miserable in the M5 comp, like literally miserable. <laughs> otherwise, they, yeah, otherwise nice, they, were, yeah. they were great in the AMG. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But when it comes to big BMWs, I'm Team Alpina. All oh, yeah. day, yeah, yeah, yeah. every oh. day. Have you driven the uh, Alpina X7, whatever they call yeah, it? Yeah, XB7. XB7. Yeah. yeah. 
Drives beautifully. Did you know it has its own tire spec? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Literally, like, I mean, how God many, help you if you get a flat in that thing. How many of those are they going to make globally to justify yeah. that spend? I think it's 2500 a year. Okay, for four years. So that's 10 grand. So yeah. that's 40,000 tires. Yeah. And, it costs, I don't know, what, $25 million to develop it. I mean, there's no way I mean, they, they come know. out of that on top. Yeah. There's, there's no but it, way. But they drive so good. It's ridiculous. It's for, a, for something that big, it drives amazing. And you've driven the regular X7. Yes. Which is, no offense, BMW, but garbage. Not I mean, great. It's not, this is, it's, it's amazingly <laughs> better. Yeah. Incredible. As is the, uh, the Maybach GLS also drives great. W- wonderful car. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean... That car is so good. Like but I'm so Team Alpina <laughs> when it comes to big BMWs. Oh. All day, every day. Camisa and I, years ago, we did a head-to-head with, um, we had a, a, a um, the Grand Coupe. So I guess the M8 Grand Coupe uh-huh. versus the Alpina B7 yeah. Grand Coupe. Whatever yeah, the hell B8, it was called. B8. No, no, no. Oh, it would have been B6 Grand Coupe. Grand, B- yes, B6. B6. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And, um, like, totally liked everything about the Alpina better. Like, yeah. From the interior to the power delivery. Yeah. Like, I think, you know, the 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 the, the, the M was like, it was the M6 Grand Coupe, but yeah. the M was like you know, a quarter second quicker on a track or something meaningless. But on the road. Oh, all day, no, all night. No, no, it was so much cooler. Comparison, yeah. And, and it had like three different shades of brown leather in the interior for no reason. It was, yeah. So it was, like, it, was like, it was like latte with caramel. It was yeah. perfect. Yeah. Shout out to Andreas. The fuck? Oh, there it is. Look, there it is. Oh, head yeah. to head. 2016. Yeah. Look how, look how nice that Alpina looks. Dude. Yeah. God. It was gorgeous. It was gorgeous. God help you. you curb one of those wheels. But other than that. Other than that. <laughs> Other than that is delightful. Oh, uh, that was a, that was God. That was eight years ago. Yeah. Almost. Jesus. And Vinny, my Vinny, Vinny my what? Vinny. Yeah. Have you seen his Alpina? No. Oh, he man. bought a 2011 Alpina B7. Oh God. Does off it, of does the transmission work? Yeah, yeah. Oh. Off of uh, off of one of our clients here at the shop. Yeah. For. I want to say ten thousand dollars. Sadly, yeah, and, and their transmission when it goes is going to be fifteen thousand. Maybe, but, yeah. but it works fine now. Okay, good. And all-wheel drive, um, and it is delightful. <laughs> I've driven it around a bunch, and it's like really, really nice. So, two thousand eleven, I drove that car on Laguna Seca, <laughs> and. Um, and that was the first time I encountered the bizarre nubby paddles that yeah. they insist on doing. Yeah, they don't do it anymore, thank God. Oh, they stopped. They okay. stopped. They have regular paddles now. And then yeah. it just, the car just stopped on like between turns uh, six and seven, or, you know, six in the corkscrew, just like wouldn't shift gears and, and just stopped going up the hill. Just yeah. powered off. Not a track car. Well, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I've always been hesitant to that one, but yeah, they're always lovely. I mean, Alpinas. I mean, are, look, ten thousand bucks, dude. Ten thousand bucks. That's a, that's know. a quarter of a new Camry. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. If he if any if he bought you know any other new car, it would depreciate that much in the first year. No, that's a great. So he was, he's li- he he even Vinny was like, look, I'm just. Yeah. Throwing this money at the wall and seeing if it sticks, dude. But if you and think about it, like nice. stuff like that, like you know, like S sixty threes from that era yeah, yeah. a little earlier, like they have no value and they're wonderful. You just got to find the one that works. Yeah, get a PPI for sure, PPI. and like could be you know it could go either way. But, Check the car but, facts. But he was just like, you know what? I'm gonna roll the dice on this fucking That's awesome. thing. And That's such the, a Vinny car. The too. wheels are worth like six. I was you gonna say I mean? the wheels might be worth twelve. Yeah, yeah, yeah like yeah. If, he, if the whole fuck if the motor blows, you just pull the fucking wheels off and yeah. scrap the rest yeah, of the yeah, car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, delightful, oh, that's little, cool. delightful, huge, huge luxury car. Great seats. Um, that's good. Yeah, yeah. What have you been driving? You know, I've kind of like almost nothing. Like it's been weird. I've been I've been in my my truck. Um, Last new thing I drove, I drove the the Sport Classic. Uh huh. Um, Zach had a go in that. I did not get to have a go. Yeah, in the Sport I Classic. thought much better. Zach, see if I'm if I'm wrong or right, but much better steering than I assumed it would have. Yeah. Kind of a mediocre gearbox yeah. and felt like it. It's could, the seven speed, right? Yeah, yeah, but it felt like it could have a lot more power going to the rear wheels than it does. Oh yeah, if you tune it, I mean, it'll go to seven hundred. It, it yeah. felt fast, but I just didn't think it felt special because in, in terms of close your eyes and driving, there's they offer so many rear wheel drive turbocharged cars, you know. But it's a great place to store money. I mean, they're, they're not making a lot of them, and it doesn't look good. I think it's good. that. I just, I just, you know, I drove a um, uh, nine eleven GTS not long ago, and that was. It was it was uh, that was a rear driver. Oh, great! PDK. Yeah, but um, I to me it felt quicker. To me it handled a, like if not 
similar, like a little bit better even. Rear wheel drive GTS manual, that's delightful. Yeah, but this was this was PDK. I mean, even was, so, it was it's just like, like fine, it was. We did a weird comparison. Don't even I don't even know how it got put together. I think both cars were yellow, but it was the the NSX Type S versus the. The GTS. Well, that's a weird comparison. It's a weird comparison, except that the GTS was quicker in a straight line, rear drive, quicker in a straight line than the NSX, really? and and quicker on all of our testing. Really? Yeah, and like cheaper, weighed less, like yeah. every advantage a car Type can S have. is nice, though. It is a nice car. It was, it was what the NSX should have been sure. from day one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but it's but like objectively nice. It's good, but again, like it was, it was like... Scott Evans and I, I think we're pretty evenly matched up in the canyons. Like, we were running – whoever was in the Porsche just ran away. Mm. It wasn't even, like, close. It was like, I can't see you anymore. Yeah. I'm going to slow down. Maybe you crash type thing. <laughs> um, and so, I, I don't know. I guess I was just hoping – I don't know. I was pretty cynical about the Sport Classic because I'm like, the reason they're detuning it, detuning, detuning it is because any more power in the transmission blows up because mm-hmm. it was never designed to take that much power. Um and like a Turbo S, like who's ever driven one and been like, if only I could get less power. <laughs> yeah, I, the thing about you know, they're all, all the turbocharged cars now. At some point, I've I've told everyone who asks to like skip the Turbo S, just get a GTS rear wheel drive. You're you're kind of right there. You're you kind of right. And then if you get the GTS all wheel drive, you're kind of basically where the last gen Turbo yeah. was, anyways. Yeah. Yeah, no. Nine Eleven's in a weird spot where it's like it's hard to really think of legit competition for them. Yeah. Um, anyways, the other Porsche I drove uh, was the first Porsche. Oh yeah. Yeah. So that was that a was, bunch of people got to have a little quick go in that. Is yeah. That, is it? It's not a recreation. It is actually the Here's first the Porsche. Story. Man, there's more information. Like the 2020 election is simpler than <laughs> the, than, <laughs> than this story. Okay, that car that I drove, that that uh, Lana f- drove and Bossom drove it. Yeah. Okay, that car was registered. Uh, it was the first Porsche ever sold, made, registered June 8th, 1948. Okay. A guy in Switzerland who liked to go racing bought it. Yeah. Car disappears. He's driving it. 550 Spider comes out. Oh, I like the way the 550 Spider looks. So he starts modifying it. He puts a big A on the back for Austria. Um, 1957, a guy named von Frank Frankenberg, von Frankenberg, who not only was the Porsche PR guy in 1957, but he founded Christophus Magazine. Oh, he I goes. He's been around since 50s. I don't know when he founded it, oh. but he was the guy oh. who founded it. He gets in touch with this Swiss guy. He says, I'll give you a 356 Speedster if you give me that car back. I'll just do a swap. And the guy's like, great. Yeah. I have this old, slow, 30-horsepower thing that I've been screwing around with. Porsche gets this car back and sits there, and they don't know what to do with it because he's modified everything about it. It doesn't look like it did when it left the factory. They have no money in 57. They have no money until, until the Cayenne 19, comes out. Yeah, yeah. 2003. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right? Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's just sitting there. 2018, Rensport 6, 70th anniversary. They go, all right, let's get this car running. Let's honor the modifications. But w- since we have the blueprints, let's build a wooden buck and hand beat together a replica of what the first car, which is this one, but it yeah. doesn't look like that anymore, what it looked like. That car is in the Peterson right now. Yeah, I've seen that one. Yeah, yeah doesn't yeah. have an engine, doesn't move, it's a roller. Yeah. But that is exactly... I think it was at Porsche Santa Clarita for a while in the underground uh, yeah, level the, as the well. Museum. Yeah. yeah. So that car is a recreation. The car I drove was the is the first Porsche. Okay. But yeah. it's been but it was it remains as modified. No, that's the tricky part is they took away a couple of the modifications. Uh-huh. They got it back to a point they liked it. But oh, okay. what, what's kind of cool is like it had like like a rear grill at one point in its life, just like all 356s had. The guy got rid of it, but what the way they did the restorations is if you open up the rear, you can see where it's welded in. Mm, so okay. they did kind of subtle stuff like that. The A is still there. Yeah, they left that. Yeah. Um, and it's it's mid-engine, which means that it's such a horrible, cramped <laughs> – it, it would never would have worked as a car. Yeah, yeah. Porsche would not be Porsche if they because they built with that. this car, but they never built any more like it, right? It's it's. If I had to guess, uh, before the war, uh, uh, Porsche and his kid were working on. It was going to be a mid-engine V10 car. It was, it was, okay. it was like a Type 74, I think uh-huh. it was called. And they had done a lot of work, and and the body was going to be. Remember that thing? It was like the um, it, it was. 
The thing with the little canopy thing? Yeah, with it was the, 1939. Yeah, it was like the real streamliner. Yeah, type 64. Center seats, yeah, the center seat thing. Yeah, so that, that, that was 64. just a, that was, that was a bug chassis with right. this body. But that body was supposed to go into a mid-engine thing okay. that was, had a V10. Okay. Okay, never happened. War, blah, 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 blah. Uh, Dr. Porsche was busy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, sorry, I got to say it. You know, that's why, uh, yeah, yeah. You got to say it. Anyhow, um... And so I think when they started up in Gamund, you know, they initially started working on a mid-engine project and then quickly said, a mid-engine car is for a society that hasn't been bombed to hell and back, people with money. That's not what we're going to do. A rear-engine car, we can still say it's Beetle-related. Yeah. You've you got this storage. You put a family storage. in it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. It's it can got, be it's used as a regular car. Packaging advantages. Yeah. A mid-engine car is a luxury item. So yeah. they, 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 I think they started, they, you know, they sold everything they could sell because yeah. they're a brand new company. And that's the story of that car. Yeah. Folks, just a quick break for today's sponsor, Electric Bikes. Not electric bikes, even though that's what they are, but I'm talking about electric e-bikes. Right? Not electric bikes, electric e bikes. Fall is the perfect time to shift how you see things, and experiencing the season from an e bike can accelerate all of the amazing things about getting outside. And electric e bikes are a fun, easy, and affordable way to get moving with pedal assist and throttle included, plus a convenient foldable design. You can take your fall adventures to a whole new level. I rode my electric e bike from my house to the office this morning for real. And it's money. Electric e-bikes start at just $7.99 with the XP Lite. And uh, these bikes are awesome. An electric bike, specifically an electric e-bike, can change your life because it makes biking to things way easier, uh, uh, easier on your body, easier to get up steep hills. And there's a bunch of accessories like the baskets and the lights, the flashers, the reflections. Uh, it can really expand the zone that you would normally maybe not ride a traditional bike in, right? With electric e-bike, you can save on traditional transportation costs like gas, parking, and maintenance. They've got financing as low as 73 bucks a month, so you can get started today. And there's no assembly required. Your electric e-bikes will ship free, fully assembled, and it's foldable for easy travel and storage anywhere you go. E-bikes can be heavier, and so you have to be a little careful when you pick it up, but the folding design does allow me to put it in the trunk of my car, take it with me, and pull it out and unfold it, ride it, uh, so it expands the reach of where I would use that e-bike. Uh, in most states, licensing and registration are not required for e-bikes, and you can enjoy the same road access as a standard bike, but you should always check the laws in your area. But I ride anything in about within about three miles, four miles of my house. I'm all about that e-bike. It makes the commute enjoyable and relaxing. And even this morning on the way to work, there's a couple traffic lights and cars just pile up at that morning rush hour area. I passed like 300 cars. Like I got here so much faster than if I was in a car. And with a pedal assist and high battery life, you can just cover more distance and get more range out of your ride. So shift into a new way of getting out there with an electric e-bike like the XP Lite starting at just $799. Visit electricebikes.com to find the electric model for you. That's L-E-C-T-R-I-C ebikes.com but it was it was it was sweet to drive in so much as i was just kind of like man my dad would really be proud of me well it's like, an experience but it probably drives like straight garbage no you know what it felt like it felt like a really good modified beetle okay which it kind of is surprisingly good brakes uh-huh they had the route really penned in like sure. they, they they had cops front and back you know i did a couple where i let the camera car get ahead and you know race but you know it's 30 Unleashed horsepower, all 30 horsepower. <laughs> yeah. yeah but i was just like you know wow i've really kind of made a career for myself you know i was having yeah. thoughts like that where yeah, like, yeah. All right, i remember i remember back when i couldn't get subaru to give me a car right right now look at me you know yeah so but it, it, it was it cool. is some it's it's a pretty little car. It's gorgeous. Yeah. yeah. It's gorgeous. And it's I, obviously priceless. Well, uh, it was funny. So I, I talked, I ran, you know, Ferdy Porsche, the, yeah. the great grandson. So I ran into him. Who I guess was just on Ben Clymer's new podcast. Yeah. He's yeah. a big, we had him on uh, on Spikes. Yeah. He's a, he's a big watch guy, actually. Uh, he's a really cool guy. Really cool guy. But, uh, I said something to him about it, and and I'm also conflating this with like many other Germans I spoke to at Rensport. But he, they were like, well, unlike Mercedes, we don't sell our priceless treasures. <laughs> you know, and I was like, low blow. 
Yeah, I'm like, because uh, if, if some, what if someone offers them a hundred million dollars? Well, one hundred and forty <laughs> million, yeah, one hundred and thirty million euros, I think. Yeah, I, you know, it's funny. I, I ran into not ran into. I was on a, a rally with. Um, um, oh, I always get his name wrong. I'm gonna, uh, he's he's an executive vice president of Mercedes. Uh-huh. Who's the guy who sold? Uh, I should get his name right. Okay, um, he's the guy who sold the Ulanau Coupe, one okay. of the, one of the two Ulanau Coupes for one hundred and thirty million euros. And I said to him, "Why the hell did you do that?" And he said, we have two. Um, we also, damn it, I got to get his name. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. He's, I can see his we face. We have two. Great guy. Marcus. His name is Marcus. Uh-huh. Um, we had two. We were also tasked by, you know, Daimler Corporate of, like, we need to have a scholarship program for underprivileged uh, young people to become automotive engineers and needs to be funded. Well, guess what would fund it? In, in perpetuity, it would yeah. be $140 million. Yeah. And we have to. I'm sure the person it went to, um, there's a clause there that was, says. I read that. That says they'll they'll lend it back for events and all that but, kind but of stuff. But also when this person dies, like oh. Mercedes has the right to reacquire. Oh, or maybe, yeah, maybe even it goes back to Mercedes. Yeah. Because he's the dead. lease. It's a hundred hundred and thirty million dollar lease. Yeah, but they have two. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and you know, so so and you know, it's like, okay, so the one there's one. Well, and that's, look, that's not the first ever Mercedes. No, it's a it's a race car that never raced. It wasn't even a race car. It was, cool. a, it was a street car that was never sold. Yeah, I mean, it's a it's a it's a running rolling concept car basically. Yeah. yeah. Like, all right, fine, fucking sell it. Yeah, and that and that was his Martin's point was that like you know everyone gets so caught up with the going. He's like, you know, Mercedes was around for about sixty years before the going came yeah. out. We did a lot. We had a lot more history. Yeah. Now, what's interesting about the first Porsche is the first Mercedes doesn't exist. The first Ferrari doesn't exist, despite what the Peter says doesn't exist first Chevy first Ford why, why does why does the, do you say the first Ferrari doesn't exist despite what the Peterson oh says? the Peterson has a replica of the first Ferrari oh, is that and they, not a genuine car it's a replica it's not the first Ferrari that's oh. gone I think it was raised and crushed or oh. destroyed I didn't realize They're, but they, they, they didn't claim it's the first they, Ferrari they, well if you if you say point black they, they'll say no it's a replica but oh. like on social media they're like that's the first Ferrari <laughs> but like so so this first Porsche is Really cool because, like, you know, there's very few companies that have the first of anything. And, yeah. they, and they just happen to get it back because some employee knew a guy. Yeah. So it's kind of a crazy story. But, yeah, yeah it, was, it was cool. It was cool. Yeah, it's a neat story. Yeah. So. Good story. For sure. I gotta, and, I, I mean, gotta... it's pretty neat that, I mean, not that everybody gets to drive it, but they brought it out for a few people to drive. Well, and they, they brought it out. And the, and the reason they brought it out besides Rentsport was it was filled with their e-fuel. So, oh, yeah. that's the yeah, that's yeah. the thing. So. But all the things, every Porsche at Rensport owned by Porsche was running on e fuel. Yeah. So, well, they can afford to spend a hundred dollars <laughs> a gallon or whatever. Oh, that's a lot more than that. Is that for, more? For now, I mean, you know, the I want to get is, a couple of drums of that shit Harry Metcalf's using. Uh, is that the carbon neutral vintage fuel? So, so the the Porsche e fuel, it, yeah. It, so all this stuff. Oh, so long story short, I think it was like Exxon in the seventies mm. invented a technology called methanol to gasoline. So as long as you have methanol, there's a way to with electrolysis or I don't know some something, turn it into gasoline. It's known. It's been around for fifty years. Um, so what what Porsche is doing with it is they okay in Patagonia they have. Basically, endless wind, so endless free energy and no human beings and no way to get the energy anywhere. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, what if you took the energy and liquefied it? Well, how do you do that? All right. You take uh, carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. You mix it with hydrogen, and that creates methanol. You convert that to gas. You put it on big ships and sail it around the world, and here's your e-fuel. Um, and, and again, it's carbon capture. So. Yeah. Chemically, under a microscope, this stuff looks exactly like gasoline. Like a chemist would not be able to tell the yeah. the hydrocarbons apart because it is gasoline. Uh-huh. Um, it's just that, unlike taking gasoline out of the ground, when you burn that, that puts new CO two in the air. This tastes, takes takes CO2, the CO2 that's in the air. Already there, so and, it keeps the level. Yeah. You know, and we we talked to this guy Carl Dums, who's in charge of the the Porsche e fuel program, and he's like, look. Porsche is going electric. All cars are going electric. However, there's 1.4 billion cars on yeah. Earth. What if we could make them produce less CO2? Wouldn't yeah. that be a good thing? Yeah. It's and like, it would be. There are, yeah, that. And obviously, the average lifespan of a car is like 15 years. Yeah. And so even if a car is sold today yeah. and they ban all that gas cars tomorrow, right. you've still got quite the transition period. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. you've got classic cars that are going to 
be kept alive for 100 years. And that was their point. According to them, they did no modifications to their priceless first Porsche ever, and it ran just fine yeah. on e-fuel what is because the, it's gasoline. Do, they, do you know what the octane rating is? It's probably it can be anything. Oh, they, you can, no, make, can make diesel make out of it. Oh, you can cool. make. And, well, what was interesting was he said, we can make better gas. There's just no engines that can take advantage of it, meaning oh. meaning with less NOx and yeah, stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. We can make the octane as high as we, we want. Make fucking the good shit. But they said you'd have to then start developing engines, but nobody's spending money to develop new engines. 15 to 1 compression. <laughs> 15 to 150 to 1. Yeah. You know, like, go nuts. Like, yeah. combust. Yeah. But, you know, all R&D dollars is going to, to EVs. So, But anyways, yeah, it was that was cool. Um, and, and there, it, you know, it felt exactly like a regular car yeah. in, in terms of the... Because it is gasoline. It's There's, just gasoline. It just yeah. comes from a different place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, This article says that it's 93 octane, but oh. they can turn it up to whatever they want it to be. Yeah, cool. Yeah, and they can turn it down. They can turn it up. They can do diesel. They can do racing fuel. They can whatever. I wonder if you will be able to buy, you know, the higher stuff in California or if they'll force them to make some garbage. So this is interesting. So I, I asked him, I said, so, like, is there, like, a Porsche gas station I can go to? And what it sounds like is going to happen is, no, that'll never really happen. Like what Harry's doing with barrels. You'll never, yeah, he's having drums shipped to his house. You'll never get that as a consumer. What they're going to do is they're going to partner with, like, Chevron and 76 yeah. and, like, replace 20% of the gasoline with synthetic gasoline. Uh-huh. That's the plan. Because, like, they're not going to compete with Chevron. Right. Um, mm-hmm. But so, like, can you make— but it would can be you... sweet if they'd sell me a drum. I'd well, buy, Harry I'd might buy also fucking have, drums. Harry might have a special designation because he has a farm. Like, you can have, you know, a fuel tank on your farm. Oh, that, so may that might be, be true. A thing. Yeah, that may be true. But I you tried buy... to order drums of, of VP. Yeah. And the, it doesn't seem to be regulated against. It seems like I can buy that. Dude, I bought when I when I did Pike's Peak, I had to buy drums of VP gas. Yeah. Yeah. I bought, I bought I forget what it was, 100, 110 octane or something. Yeah. Yeah. It's easy. You want to but Oh, it's click, expensive click as hell. to buy. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. a thousand bucks. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> How much is a drum? Uh, that's at 1300 I'm, yeah. I'm going to VP site to see if you can get delivered. 1300 for a 55-gallon? Mm-hmm. I was having this fight with someone the other day. They're like, what, what did you spend? What was the Pike's Peak money? Was was 60000 I'm like, no, it was 74000 They're like, yeah. on what? I'm, Ooh, like, yeah. I'm like, in my mind, I spent five grand on gasoline. <laughs> you know, yeah. I don't remember it's, exactly. Uh, it's $900 from VP site. I think I was looking at okay. some special and that's motorcycle for, gas. Can you, uh, divided, what's that divided? 50 by 50. Gallon Is drum. it 50 or 55? 54. 54, 54 oh, gallons. Yeah. Okay. So that's expensive as hell. But that's for what? For 100 octane? Probably 110. Or 110. That's 110. Yeah. Okay. At $16 a gallon. Yeah, it's expensive. Yeah, it's expensive. Yeah, it's really expensive. Yeah, all this stuff's expensive. Yeah. yeah. But so that seems to be Porsche's plan. And then they're going to have a production facility in Patagonia. They're going to have one in Tasmania and then one in Houston. Um, now the trick is you got to use green energy to right. make this stuff. Right. If you don't, then it's, it's a yeah. total waste. Yeah. Might as well. That's like the hydrogen thing right now. Yeah. 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 Exactly right. Yeah. So, but the problem or, with hydrogen or charging is, electric cars. I mean, or that. Thing. Yeah. You're running off a of coal like, like well, diesel. There's yeah. That's a whole other conversation. But the the problem with hydrogen is, you know, in the U.S., like most electricity is not from coal. It's like less than twenty like percent. Natural, natural gas. gas. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If you're burning natural gas to make hydrogen, doesn't really yeah. wash. Right. right. Yeah. Totally agree. Yeah. yeah. So, but that's why they're doing it in Patagonia and, and then Tasmania and Houston. I'm assuming a lot of wind and solar in Texas, um, and uh, that will be the for the the, the the synthetic Porsche fuel we get. And by the way, this is like 2027. Yeah. Well, that will come from Houston, and it won't be that like you'll go yeah, down to Houston. If you have to transport it across the ocean, that probably knocks some of the. Yeah, he was, we asked him about the that. the ship is also running it. No, we asked him, look, yeah, ships need to get cleaner. But even even if the ship is really dirty, he, he had the math. And he's like, because it hauls 1.4 million gallons, like, mm-hmm. it's still a net good thing. Mm-hmm. You know, and mm-hmm. I, again, I don't have the math in front of me. But, but our stuff would come from Houston and, you know, it would be trucked out, hopefully hydrogen and EV trucks. I, who knows? It's all, yeah, it's we'll all complicated. See. But that seems to be what Porsche is doing with their e-fuels. Right. Which is cool. It is cool. Yeah. And I, as soon as I am able, I will buy them and run them. Yeah. I mean, I, I'd buy them now if I could. Well, yeah. And that was I, – I kept pressing that. I, like, I don't know if you'll ever be able to do that. He, he seemed to be saying, like, well, if there's enough demand. But he's just like, we're just going to put it – I think it, if, like, you have a, if you have a Porsche exclusive manufacturer automobile, <laughs> you, should have, you should get a special Dispensation. Uh, card. Yeah. 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 
I mean, like, so it's like now it's like, can you get an allocation of a GT3? It's like, can I get an allocation of a hundred gallons? Look, look, you know, Porsche guys, is, you you are one, but you know, like, if you could offer Porsche gasoline. <sighs> Oh baby! Imagine, <laughs> imagine I'm bringing a trailer. It's only run on Porsche gasoline. <laughs> exactly, forty five hundred right. miles right, on right. exclusively Porsche brand. But who gasoline. pumped it? Was it a Porsche employee? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Fucking prove it, bro. The DME report <laughs> says Porsche pure gasoline. Yeah, I think it would be a money maker for as, them. As never, oh, I almost went as with a purity joke uh, Ooh, uh, that yeah, I stopped yeah. myself. I don't know. Uh, I, I should have gone. I should have gone for go it. Go for it. You're allowed to. It. It's, it's cool. too late now. Cool. I already called. called Called the shot. Can't, can't do it. Um, but I'm kind of excited for that, actually. Yeah, cool. look, I, look, you know, we, we want less carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. That's, yeah. Harry said his cars run great. It, it's chemically identical. Yeah, so. I mean, that's this guy, Carl, what he said was you put it under a microscope, you get a trained chemist with a PhD in, you know, hydrocarbons, and they yeah. look at it and they go, that's a hydrocarbon. That's also a hydrocarbon. Yeah. It's the same thing. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. And yet it somehow just emits different stuff. No, no, it emits exactly the same. And they can make oh, diesel, too. Uh, yes, apparently, yes. That's interesting. Yeah. Be yeah. Again, there's this, I don't know anything about it. I, 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 you can look it up. Uh, methanol 2 gasoline is the technology, and mm. I believe he said Exxon came up with it. Uh, you know, when they were running, oil reserves were running low in the 70s, or OPEC, you know, everything. Yeah. So they, they were like, how do we get gasoline? Yeah. Um, and it's just been this, like, kind of shelved technology, you know. And that, that happens with cars. I mean, you know, you remember, like, like the Honda CVCC, yeah. which, which was the pre-ignition little mini uh -huh. thing? Well, uh, I think Audi actually came up with that. It was, like, for a, for a rotary. And then they just they patented it and put it on a shelf because they didn't need it. Yeah. And then Honda said, hey, let's get ahead of this Clean Air Act thing. We'll do CVCC. Um, you ever drive one of them? Yeah, my dad. Uh, my, not only have I driven one, my dad uh, had one. Oh, really? Yeah, he had a Civic CVCC, Yellowbird, it was called. Um, <laughs> this was in the 70s. Yeah. Uh, that was, so I came home from the hospital in a Buick, but the other car we had was that Honda. And um, and then I did a story for Motor Trend Classic. I tracked down a yellow, seven, I think my dad had a 75, and I tracked down a 76, uh -huh. same car. Uh, and it was great. I mean, Drive pretty nice. Put it back in production. Yeah, they drove. I drove one once, and I was impressed. It drove pretty nice. The, the craziest thing about that was it had uh, independent rear suspension. Uh huh. And the reason was was they I guess they had a meeting, and, and Sorocho Honda was still alive, and um, you know they they were for to save money they were going to put a beam axle in the back, but then there was an engineer who apparently like refused to get up from the table or refused to leave the room who said that it'll be more practical, even though it'll cost more, it'll be more practical because with independent suspension, you could have a lower load floor uh -huh. and you could fit more stuff in the back. Huh. And Hiroshi, uh, uh, Hiroshi was so taken by his passion that he said, okay, spend the money, do independent rear. Huh. And it As paid a result, off. it handles better too. Yeah, and it's just a killer little car. Yeah. I mean, that, that was, could you imagine, like, you know, you remember American cars from 1975. Well, I remember the day <laughs> like, that car was able to pass smog without a cat. That was because of the CVCC yeah. technology. Yeah, yeah it which had a, was it, like everyone was reverse engineering them. But it also drove nice. Yeah, it drove it great. A nice it, but again, car. as far as I know, it was it was a piece of Audi tech where yeah. it was just a, it was a had a little cylinder that pre-ignited the fuel that led to a cleaner combustion. Yeah. So like there's less NOx and all that. Whatever catalytic converter takes out, they sure. were able to pre-burn it. It's um, fucking cool, that car. Oh, so good. Yeah, and they are made they, a wagon, Are too. they collectible yet? I mean, they're kind of, right? When I wrote that story, this is going back over 10 years. Um, Can you look on Bring a Trailer and see if any Honda CVCCs have... I mean, Bring a Trailer would be $80 million. Yeah, I'm just curious. <laughs> I'm curious to what degree they are collectible. But I think the guy said, like, you know, for, like, a numbers-matching one, it yeah. was, like, 2500 bucks or something. And he was his brother, Labor of Love. Yeah. Like, I think it was – their story was, like, when their parents immigrated with them from wherever they came from. Like, that was the only car they had. Right. And, you know, they meticulously put it back together. And and it was, it was, it was great. Yeah. It was super cool. Fun photo shoot. We shot it at Magic Mountain in the um, – like the fairway. Oh, cool. You know, with like the ring toss and everything. Oh, wow. Here's a, is this recent? That's oh, it's from February, February 23. And this is a nice there one. There we go. Wow. 34,000? Yeah. Thir so this one's that a project. One, that one's a project. Is 9,300. What? From fuck February. Off and then fuck that off. one is amazing fuck looking. Fuck off. This one's from July 2022. It's 34 Gs. Fuck off. And it's a fantastic <laughs> color. 
Yeah, but that's ridiculous. Go down. Is it, low, is it like low miles or something? Scroll down. How many miles are on it? 32,000 original miles. I mean, that's, that's yeah. more than a dollar a mile. Fuck that. That thing is <gasps> mint, though. Clean. Look how mint it is. I mean, it would... It would cost you $32,000 to find a nicer one than that. Uh, let's see. One was sold. Well, I can just pull up the results. But one was sold a month ago, and it was eight grand. There yeah. we go. Nine that's grand, right. eight nine grand, nine right. grand. Yeah, yeah. This that, one, that's... But then it goes, like, the nice ones are 27, 30, yeah. 34, 15. <laughs> kind of all over the place. So it's, it, it parallels a Fox body. <laughs> You, know, you can get one yes. for ten grand, but you want a great one. You're going to spend. I would say a fox body is a little quicker. Did you see? I just came up the uh, the proto the the Celine prototype oh, God. SSC that they used for carb testing. They used it as a press car. It was 1987 Celine number one. Oh my God! And it just came up. How much? is I don't that? know. It's going to go for a lot, but I'm. It was very. I mean, are there Celine fans? Yeah, they're yeah, very. They're, they're, they're very are. collectible, yeah, yeah, yeah. particularly the Fox bodies. I don't know about the later cars, but but Celine Fox bodies are very collectible. No, they're fucking rad too. Um, yeah, but oof, yeah. I wonder... Did you find it? Yeah. <laughs> Look at the color too. That's White, great. With the blue no, that's and black great. Stripe. That's great. Okay. Celine, nineteen eighty seven, Vin 001. and uh, it's got the better headlights. It's not a four eye. It's a it's a box light. Cool looking car. And a great yeah. looking car. You wanna, Those wanna wheels are guessing? not the production wheels, so it's got a different set of wheels on it. You want to do some guessing on price? I bet this is. It's low miles too. It's like seventy five hundred miles. I bet this thing goes for a hundred grand. Mm -hmm. oh, I'd, easy. Say, I'd say more than that. Yeah, aren't easy. there Fox bodies in some cases? Cobra R's. A well, yeah, co yeah, a yeah, Cobra yeah. R Cobra, have yeah, been yeah. A, have been over a hundred. Um, there's Can been you... a couple like mint ninety three Cobras that have gotten up there. There was one of those Seven Up cars. Remember oh, them? Yeah, the yeah. Seven Up convertible with like no miles. That but got I've a lot. seen like. Blazers, just a yeah. K five blazer for yeah. two hundred. Yeah, so that was some, some resto mod shit though. No, I, I stock. Saw, uh, as far as I could tell, it was stock. But um, that is probably that would be the worst. Look at the look at the emissions oh. testing exhaust tips. But, they're designed to have shit clipped onto yeah, them. But, they're like but real also, funky looking. While while that stripe was cool in that one photo, look how poorly it ends <laughs> yeah. behind the rear wheel. Yeah. Hey boss, what do we do with this uh, at the back here? Yeah. That's enough paint. It's a little, <laughs> it's a little wonky. That's enough paint there, Daryl. Yeah. So um, the, the most expensive K5s on Bring a Trailer were all like resto mods, and then a Ring Brothers one went for two fifty. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's Ring Brothers. Uh, okay. Yeah. So I'm gonna just say because the world's insane. Yeah, two fifty. Put will me get down two, for two fifty. Think the Celine will right? get two fifty? I mean, look, I, I when you say you know the people are Celine fans. Yes, I've met yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. I always just think of like Shelby fans and how they really are in a cult. Yeah. Um, and I, I've had these weird conversations where I'll be like, no, that I drove it. That car is actually terrible. Like the super snake, <laughs> yeah. you know, the yeah, stupid snake. And they're like, what are you talking not, about? They're not great. It, it, it's so great. 900 horsepower. I'm like, yeah, yeah but it's not really. Yeah, also, but 450 at the wheels. Uh, yeah. And also like it, everything sucks. But yeah. yeah. So, so I think. Yes. These these are for a very specific subset of people, incredibly collectible, and this is their king. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Number so, one. Yeah, number one. I, and I, number, not only is it number one, it was a press car, so there's going to be a lot of documentation. Mm -hmm. Sure. And yeah, it's yeah, got yeah, yeah. super low miles. And it has plates on it, so I think you could street drive it. it has what? It had plate on it. Oh, it's so street legal. You, yeah, yeah so it's a street car. Because some prototypes you can't drive on the oh, street. Oh yeah, really, no, which yeah. We, well, this was. I mean, that was built off of a production car, so you could. So it was, you know. Wake me up when it's Roush number one. I, I like Roush. <laughs> Do you? Yeah. You team Roush versus... Uh, you like Roush 3M builds, tape? Ra Roush builds <laughs> like, the stoutest engines. Uh, I, I love they Roush motors. They build good engines. Yeah. It's totally undermined by the fact that they double face tape shit to their cars. I'm just saying, <laughs> those engines are just badass. And, and honestly, a, motor. a couple of the best cars I've ever driven have been Roush engine cars. They so. build they build good motors. I will give them that. Yeah, yeah. like I drove, um, God, like a Superformers Daytona Coupe. Oh, yeah. Um, with a 560 horsepower Roush, uh -huh. big block. Yeah, the shit that ends up um, in the Superformance cars is rad. The GT40 that uh, Hillbanks got is like, oh, my God. Oh, I haven't driven that one, but I drove a, a, another press car. That's the best. That was we did a video we did that versus that remember that fucked up Lancia thing from the horrible Texas cut down oh, Ferrari yeah, yeah, yeah. which really sucked despite yeah, what everyone tells you it looked beautiful yeah, but it didn't it sucked yeah, ass it was horrible good. that's why you've never seen another one but um <laughs> but Jethro Jethro his thing was like why spend three quarters of a million dollars when for two fifty yeah. you could have this GT forty and we were both like yeah GT forty yeah. yeah. like it's just so badass yeah it's they're so amazing dope. and yeah. you can get them like 
right hand drive, right side shift, left hand drive, center shift. Like you can get them in like and four configurations. They we we turned it down. They wanted to give us a uh, EcoBoost one, but apparently it's like badass. Like like it's a it's is a, it a V6 twin turbo? It's the it's the Ford GT. Kind uh, of spec kind of motor, so it's but it's like in the class. GT40, 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 GT40 that's, and so it's like yeah, big no. power for Still, not a lot of weight. No. I was like, experiment. give us the, give us no. the Roush, it's please. Not what I want. Yeah, yeah I don't we want filmed that. the the black and gold Hillbank one yeah, for proving grounds. One I drove. So Lee Keen drove it's it, incredible. Chuck Ball it, and he's like, this is legit. What was yeah. the engine that? Uh, was it a Coyote? Uh, no, it was a four twenty seven. Yeah, five hundred whatever horsepower. Yeah. But they do make a Coyote motor GT40 now, which is like the— like, It could be cool. If they dress it up right, it could be cool. Great sounding motor. Yeah. Easy to get 500 horsepower out yeah, of. Yeah, and you it know? works. It works. It works it's modern. Key. It's modern. Yeah. yeah. So, and because, you know, look, those Roush motors are great. I have no idea what it's like after 1,000 miles. Like, yeah. after 100 miles, it's rad. Exhausting. <laughs> I did one day in it, and I was so tired. But yeah. it was it was an experience. There was, sure. I mean, and again, for like the— Basically, the price of a GT3. That's what GT3s you know, are going for now. More expensive. If you the, wanted to replicate, yeah. If you wanted a, if you want a turnkey Superformance GT40 with a big motor now, you're you're in the high threes. They've got oh, that's like the last five years. Yeah, yeah, they're expensive. Everything's expensive. But but like, you know, how much is a real? You know what I mean? It's like they're 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 and they're very well made. They're very well made, and also they. I think they said seventy five percent of the parts would bolt yeah. onto the first one. Yeah, they which do. Is wild, and they. I think they race them at Goodwood now too. Of course they, they do. let. I think once they started letting them into those events, they were like, "All right, we can, we can." I mean, look, price you know, this a little bit. You know, I don't think Goodwood's admitting it, but that G, uh, the, the 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 two fifty GTO yeah. that blew up at Goodwood. Yeah, that was the replica. There was um, four. 250s there, yeah, and it just so happened that the uh, replica. Blew I think up. it was Harry actually posted a comparison of those cars in the paddock, and when they were lined up next to each other, there was a difference in the angle of the windshield and how the the shape of the doors went, and it was the kind of thing where if the car was by itself, you'd never know. You never know. But I saw when it's that literally car. next to an identical one, you go, "Oh yeah, that that doesn't fit right." Yeah, yeah. I, I saw that car, and it was it, it was absolutely gorgeous before it caught fire and exploded. <laughs> Um, but I, somebody, I'll leave him nameless, uh, but somebody told me that, like, almost everything at the Revival is fake because they're, you know, they're getting, you're getting into, like, the eight-figure cars. Yeah. And they they really do race them. Like, yeah. you know, you're not going to tell Marino Franchetti to take it easy. Yeah. Like, he's trying to beat Tom Christensen. He's yeah. You know, Tom Christensen is, is the most, you know, competitive human being in the history of the world. Yeah, the driving is you know. insane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the, the, so. the driving is nuts. But I was I don't, there. I don't blame them. Yeah. <laughs> That's some shot, isn't it? Look at that. The yeah, other car amazing. is fucking in a drift. And then this thing has got an enormous fireball. So what GTM. happened was the differential exploded and part of it went right through the fuel tank. So it was, oh. a, very, it was a very quick fireball. Yeah, yeah. But I was like, you know, no one got hurt. That was yeah, the yeah, good yeah. part. But also, yeah. like, yeah, they didn't really get there with the fire bottle that quick. <laughs> you know, the, the guy kind of got out, went back in the car, got his own fire extinguisher. Right. Was it a period correct fire extinguisher? It just shoots water. <laughs> it's just like a bag of powder. He's like <laughs> fucking flinging Throw gin on it. <laughs> what, did we, what did we use back then? Um, what an amazing race, though. Yeah. Oh, it was, it was, it was, it is, I mean, Good Revival is just yeah. sweet. It's, uh, it's, uh, they go you, for it, man. You Jensen's guys should go. on board of his Jaguar. We love to go. Sliding every Next corner. Year. Ooh, we this year was our first time at Festival of Speed, and that was a good time. Festival of Speed's phenomenal. Did you get really to drive? Fun. We didn't, but for a dumb reason. Uh, I didn't expect to drive. Didn't have a suit? No, I didn't have a physical copy of my competition license. Dude. They wouldn't let me drive cool. up the hill without presenting my competition license. I've driven up the hill without a competition license. Maybe it's a new thing. I don't know. Maybe I don't know if it was a rule it, of It could have been the manufacturer. It was probably Lotus. I think it was Lotus that wanted me to have it. Lotus? Yeah, to drive a fucking electric SUV up the hill, no less. I drove that electric SUV. It, Jack did too. I didn't get to drive that it's one. It's good. I, mm -hmm. They're gonna get me one when it comes when it comes here. But yeah, it, I you know what? I probably should have been a little more prepared and had it. I mean, uh, they should have told you. The, well, I, I yeah, they yeah. Sh that could have. Because I because I, I remember I I drove um. It was it, it was uh, Google this Zach the uh, Tullius uh, E type Tullius Racing How do you pronounce e -type. that Tullius T spell it. T U L L I U S Tullius. Um, so I they're like you know hey come to come to the festival of speed I'm gonna drive a D type and like mm. D types 
yeah, that's top pretty, three pretty things awesome. that I care about on, on Earth, right? And they get there, they go, no, oh, sorry, old chap. Uh, a British journalist is going to drive the D-Type. And I was like, motherfucker. And they're like, but you can drive this. You're not British enough for yeah. this particular car. This thing? Yes. Wow, look so, at that fucking thing. First of all, the clutch cable on the D-Type snapped, so that motherfucker never got to drive it. <laughs> Second of all, that's a 500 horsepower straight pipe V12 with a miniature steering wheel with no windshield. That's which drove nasty. so rad. It's pretty nasty. <laughs> Dude, it was so good. It's real nasty looking. It looks like if you NASCAR'd an E-Type, basically. It, yeah, it, it, well, an American American guy built it. There so, wow. Bob Tullius. Yeah. So, basically, 1975, last year of E-Type production. No one's buying them because yeah. the car's been out since 61. So, Jaguar says, hey, Tullius. We'll give you a whole bunch of them. Can you do something with them? He builds this. He wins uh, whatever SCCA race he's in that season. Yeah. 76. Uh, US, U.S. Champions, SCCA Nationals at Brainerd. Yeah. yeah. He finished third at Brainerd won, in that thing. Wow. He won Road Atlanta. Yeah. The car was a, wow. it was a, it was a sweetheart. And then and then he did a Tullius XJS the next year, which was oh. like the same motor and everything. V12. Was it also insane? It looks even better, honestly. Really? Yeah. Google. Did oh, he yeah. flatten? Like, did he? There's a bunch raise of body work going on here. Yeah, he dropped the, yeah, he so dropped it's the whole. It's a. It's like a body drop. Wow. Like he dropped the body on a flare on a fender they flare. Kept the fenders. But yeah. Yeah. It's like here's, a speedster. So here's how it also wild. has much wider wheels than a stock type. Very oh, it drove so well. It looks here, great on Panasports. But but so here's if everyone's wondering what's it like to drive up the hill. So they basically say, okay, it's 9 a.m. Like get in your car, and you sit there unbelted, and you have all these like. Nonchalant British guys like, ah, hey, mate, don't worry, we'll let you know, you know, and you're just kind of sitting there like, hmm, hmm, hmm. Then all of a sudden they're like, go, 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 go. And you have 20 seconds. <laughs> yeah, and 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 uh, the, the Duke of Richmond, who at the time was still Lord March, uh-huh. he's driving uh, uh, Petty's um, Superbird yeah. up the hill, and there's Richard Petty talking to him, and you're staring at him like, what am I doing here? <laughs> and then all of a sudden, go, 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 and you 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 know you flail out onto the the front straight. And like I'm sitting there, I'm like, okay, I, I, I guess I should like, eh, you know, like first gear feels strong, shift to second. Oh, that feels good, you know. Third's always the one that gets you. Like, wow, it sticks. Okay, cool, go for it. And then you go into the little cul-de-sac and you line up behind whatever. Yeah. I was buying a Daytona prototype. I was in the American racing class because uh-huh. Tullius is American. And, uh, you know, Lord March goes, whoever's in the Daytona prototype goes, and I go and like, is over in a minute and 20 seconds or whatever it takes and that's it and then you're <laughs> sitting at the top of the hill for half an hour I was Chris Harris was there well, I was hanging out with Harris yeah. so it was, it was a good time but um, he, he he drove something in that group but it's it's wild it's a cool event yeah and Harris that, Harris does not like driving things up the hill it's very nerve wracking yeah he yeah. said unless you're unless you're driving like a drift car you know, and can put on a show. He said, there's really no way to put on a good show, but there's a million ways to have a major fuck up and embarrass yourself. I would say it's kind of the attitude I take is like, I will never be the fastest journalist, so I'm never going to stuff a car on a launch Mm -hmm. or knock on wood. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I love driving Laguna Seca as much as the next guy. I don't care if you're faster than me. Like, I'll put in my time and it's fine. Yeah. So that's what I, I, my take on the hill is, Everyone's there to look at the car. Uh, you know, just don't crash it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, like, I think Chris, because he's so competitive and does, yeah. you know, wants to race, he's trying to, like, and he's Chris Harris. He's got to do something. Well, and there's expectations of him. Yeah. You know, but, but unless but he, you're, in, he, they asked him to get in that new uh, 963. Which he had never driven before. Yeah. It was wet. And he's like, I don't want to do this. Like, this is terrible. And, and like, wet, <laughs> th- there is one sketchy part where there's like a, a bridge or next to a stone wall. Yeah. Like, the other thing is, no one's looking there, so slow down. It's cool. <laughs> like, it's lift. You lift. Yeah. But, but um, check out the Tullius. Uh, XJS? Yeah, I get the year wrong. This is 74. So 75 would have been XJS. I love a racing XJS. Have you seen the Bathurst video of the XJS? Oh, look at that. That looks spectacular. Look at this thing. Oh, that's excellent. Look Fuck at that yeah. thing, right? I want that. Yeah, exactly. And like it I said, it's some, somehow it's even from? better. That Jag, it's got a wide body. It's got like the 935 style, like aero wheels. Oh, it's incredible. 580 horsepower V12, dogleg manual gearbox. Uh, that is really, really cool. Yeah, and, and again, it's side pipes. <laughs> when, yeah. are, when are 
are why aren't people doing Turbo more fans. Jaguar XJS resto mods? They really should because be. everyone's obsessed with Porsches because it's like a Leica camera. I'm really like, fucking <laughs> missing. I always do that when someone's like, I got a new Leica. I'm like, name another brand of camera. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know, like uh, if I do another project car any ever again, I would like it to be a Jaguar XJS. Dude, it's just too let's do, great looking. What if you did exactly that and it was black? I mean, the, the have most you evil seen the car. one? Um, there's a guy in L.A. who did an XJS uh, street car with a 2JZ. Yes. yes. And I it saw looks him. fucking he, rad. He was at Cars and Coffee at the at the Griffith Park. I forget. Oh, Mary didn't uh, Rob Dom drove it for his thing? It's in like, uh, it, it looks amazing. Okay, at Zach. Least, at least on video. Zach, Google. Do you have a, is that, do you have a shot of it? I do. The, okay, uh, well, after that. Oh, look at that. Yeah, yeah, it's not yeah, wide yeah. body, but otherwise it is ace. No, it, it doesn't need to be wide body. Looks this beautiful. car is so gorgeous. I would, I would want to do a fucking wide Magnus body. Magnus knows the XJS guy. He's up in, like, Calabasas. Yeah. And he's the whisperer. He's, yeah. Oh, and he's, yeah. and he's the guy, guy huh? Yep. So he just my dad had an, when my dad yes. first got a little bit of money. Like in the in the early '80s, I was like two or three years old. We lived in a very small house in New Jersey, and my dad first got like a little bit of money. It was his dream to buy an E-Type, but in, in the '80s, like nobody fucking wanted an E-Type, and he's six foot five. So he wouldn't fit. He wouldn't fit. Yeah. So he bought a brand new XJS. Perfect. Which. He had for one year, yeah. and according to him, it spent 10 months of the first year in the shop, yep. and then it was lemoned, and so, <laughs> he never thought about so it again. I, I'm, I'm, there's I'm, one photo of it. I'm blanking <laughs> on his name. God, I'm, I'm losing my mind. Anyways, there's a guy, he used to, I, Ken, Ken, he, and he, he worked for Porsche. He was the only American involved in the 918. He mm -hmm. was the electrician on the 918, but he worked for... Uh, Ford and when Ford bought Jag, he went to Browns Lane on the last day of production to kind of start thinking of, of, of the last day of XJS production uh -huh. to start thinking about the XK8 the, and whatever. Yeah. yeah. So he says he gets to Brown Lane. He says the thing was was really noisy because the plant manager of Brown Lane and his brother hated each other, and the brother was the guy who worked at the place that did the body in white. So the, the XJSs would come in, and the, the uh, A-pillars were off by one degree. Okay. So every single one, you had to put a piece of wood across the A-pillars and hammer it up one degree. And he no did this way. On, yeah, he did this on every purpose. Every single car? Every single one. So he says they're in the factory, and then suddenly, like, because it's the last day, the hammering dies down. And suddenly, for the first time ever, it's silent. And no one's hammering on A-pillars. And then they're standing there, and the last XJS, like 96, I think, yeah. rolls off the line. Beautiful blue coupe. Comes down the ramp, stops in front of everybody, and everyone's kind of silent. And then the roof liner falls down, and like everyone just starts cheering. <laughs> <laughs> they're so like they're so pretty, they're and so such good looking, garbage. I but know. like, yeah, but like you could you could really do something cool with one, dude. Hell yeah, like. What? But, but speaking of cool, okay, uh, everyone uh, listening, stop what you're doing. Google X Jaguar XJS Bathurst. This is the greatest lap video. Is this Tom Walkinshaw's car? I think it is. I'm not yeah, all sure. The great, the great, yeah, the great XJS is our Walkinshaw. But well, the, the, what engine do you put in a XJS? V12. Or, you leave the V12. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so you modify the existing? Yeah. Because yeah. you get the V12 with a manual gearbox, though. So you got to find a manual gearbox. I don't think you ever could. They had manuals only for the straight six. They so from ninety oh boy ninety two to ninety four. Yeah, they did a they did a six cylinder uh, option. Yeah, and you could get a manual, but I think that was the only XJS with a manual. Mm. But there are yeah you know, any Tremec or whatever could yeah. handle the power. Yeah, and yeah. All that. Have you found know. this? I don't know if I'd want the V12. I might want I, the, the idea of the two J is quite ah, that's v, kind of delightful. V, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, so, this is Tom Walkinshaw driving. So we're sitting there with Angus McKenzie one day talking about great laps, and he goes, hey, mites, have you seen the, the XJS at Bathurst? And we're like, no. And he puts this on, and it just shut us all up. We're just like, uh... See, is this raw sound? I mean, uh, do we have... I don't know if we can play this, but... Um, it, it's, uh... Right. Just when it starts cornering, it's just ridiculous. Like, I wonder what you have to do to really make one of these things handle. I mean, how? I mean, he's that's he's going very fast here. Like, very, <laughs> you see that? He's mobbing. He's got some nice oversteer there. Yeah. Drift the corner, and this is a V12, so I guess I guess it is possible. I mean, there's so much meat under that car. Yeah. Look at that. Look at that. Yeah. What Look a at track. That. 
It looks good. Yeah. It's, God damn, does it look awesome. That yeah. stance. It looks like they've cut the fenders a little bit for maybe bigger tires. It's so it's hot. It's a tough um, looking car. Look oh, at that. Yeah. <laughs> I would I, I think I think as a project car, one of these would be extremely rad. Yeah, and they're not hey, You know who's got one actually? Tanner has oh, one he? with a Chevy motor in it. Really? With a three fifty in it. From I don't I don't I don't covet yeah. that. But he but it was a top gear prop a, car. A lot Rad. of people did that. I'm just like if you have a twelve cylinder engine, like don't rip it out. Like make it work. Yeah, well I mean I just don't know what you'd have to do to make that twelve cylinder engine like good. Because it's mean, not good. Uh, the 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 Tullius motors, you know, whatever they did, 580 horsepower, right, but straight how do you, pipe. But, but can you make <laughs> that work as a street car? I mean, or does it need to be on a? You I, know, a I, racing do, I don't know. Well, this, that's got a manual. Yeah, the race cars would have. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I like that. The, it's very gentlemanly that this car has a four-spoke steering wheel. <laughs> It's like a really gentlemanly thing to do. So fast. First the in car is. I wish they could have picked a better section than the fucking the straight. The straight, but we should go to Bathurst. We Look should go to Bathurst. I, would really, I would only want to go if I could drive the circuit. Like I, 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 I think mean, it's, I wanna, I think I it's public the, roads most. No, of the I want to drive it like as a circuit. Oh well, yeah. Okay. You have and that I think the public license? road thing. <laughs> I do. I just to bring the copy. <laughs> I think the public road thing is sort of a wink, wink public roads. I don't know how much it's actually Like Le Mans, where there's yeah. like some parts of it is yeah. still public. Anyways, watch that. I, I, love, I love that I'd love car. to talk to Dom about that 2JZ one. That thing is pretty cool. I feel like a, a, a beastie straight six is, is a good way to do it. I mean, again, there were 90s ones. I don't think the 90s ones looked as good, but S54, were... dude. Oh yeah, S fifty four. That's cool. S fifty four powertrain. That would fun. be sick. That could be cool if it fits. I don't know. But if a it twelve fits. cylinder. I don't know. Yeah. I so love cool. twelve cylinders. Me too. I do. Yeah, I, yeah, I yeah. love it. But yeah, you'd, yeah. it'd have you'd have to have a. Well, make I don't know. Maybe if you did, one. you know, sleeves and full engine management. Like, is it possible to just use the block? <laughs> Sounds affordable. <laughs> hey, you said you said Jaguar project car. Sounds so a, yeah, right. You know. No, I pre I mean take it all apart and, and that's what I'm saying if you're better, taking it all yeah. apart so anyway blueprint the V12 and then have somebody there must be somebody with some knowledge somewhere of how to get a lot of horsepower out of a 5.3 liter 12 it's, it's Judd yeah, yeah, called yeah. Judge. <laughs> Yeah, they, you know what? Maybe you could do a Viper powertrain no. in there. They sound, no, they sound, they sound No, they sound good with a rear exit exhaust. They sound bad with a side pipe because you're only hearing half of it. Okay. The Vipers, remember the Vipers in the late 90s where they did the rear exit exhaust? Those sound totally different. They do sound and different. And pretty nice. And they didn't burn you. And they didn't set your legs on fucking fire. <laughs> well, also. no, from the inside they did, but not from the outside. Right. Yeah, well, yeah. priorities. What you do is out the um, hood, fucking straight up Hoonigan shit. I don't think we ever, like, took photos but i remember one year we had vipers and we had we went to like wherever walmart and bought a thermometer and it was like 50 degrees hotter by your feet than it was by your head was i did so a road ridiculous. trip in a viper once and my feet were fucking melting by it's, the end of it it's wild yeah it's wild because like corvettes had the same problem it was a massive corvettes, transmission it's the trans tunnel yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I, when in my c5 what we actually did was a pretty common thing was we took the whole interior part and dynamited the trans tunnel, which helped immensely, but like even even C sevens couldn't get that quite right. Like I, it was it was like you know you must your driver's been doing somebody, this for forty years, somebody, guys, seventy years. Somebody must know, right? But like precision never rests, bro. But, but like with, with the Corvette, like okay, it gets hot. <laughs> with the Viper, it's like this is ridiculous, yeah, yeah. you know. But, but that's like the charm of the Viper, right? Like it's one of it's the good, many charms. It's good because it's bad. Well, I just like in the Viper how like the the dead pedal is the exact same object as the clutch, yeah. <laughs> and the dead pedal is in front of you. The clutch is where the brake pedal should be. The, yeah. the brake pedal is where the accelerator should be. The accelerator is behind the transmission, <laughs> and your feet are burning. <laughs> yeah, they think the coon, you think the Countach is awkward. Oh, like, yeah. no, try a Viper. And, and by the way, this is the fifth gen Viper. This is not the first gen. The fifth gen was that bad. The Viper. When I would drive a Viper, what would happen is my clutch foot, my toe would get caught on the bottom of the dash. Oh that yeah, was yeah, always... of course, of course, yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> But man, what lovable things! I would lo oh, they're I great. love Vipers. I've recently come around to the very early cars, the oh, ones the that greatest. are like horrible. Oh, three spokes, like, no door handles. Yeah. <laughs> and when you pull the handbrake, it's like here. Yeah, it's like, it's like an erect horse cock. It's just like <laughs> this giant. I saw one at a car museum, and the handbrake was pulled up. And I'm like, that's in line with your head. Yeah. Well, it's, you know, erect horse cocks. Yeah. They, they know their demo. You know. <laughs> 
It's fucking great. But I, I, I'm a big Viper fan. But yeah, Viper XJS. Let's let's My get all the My favorite Viper, I think, is somebody else's Viper. Totally. I'd love for you to have a Viper. I, I would love I for me to have a first gen Viper, and uh, it would be a lot of maybe fun. We sh- maybe we should plan J. You know, Spike and Zuckerman, yeah. they've got their budget, but maybe you and I have to do Plan Jew. I mean, I think a first gen Viper is what, like $30,000? 30 to 40 gets you, okay. gets you in the so game. 20 grand. Yeah. Can we store it here? <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll take that as an ownership percentage. <laughs> okay. Annual yeah, maintenance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, the, but I, we throw the dealer tag on it and oh, have a yeah. real good time. Oh, I can yeah, make yeah. you an employee. Because, because, like, you know, there's several problems with it. Uh, the, the big one being... <laughs> Where do we start? The big one being there's no roof. There's no glass. Yeah. It just has a windshield. I know. I love the commitment. It's 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 wild, right? You know, that's when Preuninger with this Spider RS went, do you know what we need to do here? <laughs> <laughs> this has been solved in 1992. 36,000. Boom. What, are the, what a great color. Oh. 495 miles. Well, two days left. Oh, two days oh, left. Oh, still, still? Okay, okay, wait. Here, give here, us, here, give us some sold. So 39,000. Oh, with those heinous wheels. No, you want the three about spoke. One owner, 94 red RT10, sold for 41,000. That's all right. Sold for 35. Chris Farley's car got 80. Good for fucking okay. Kim Farley's cousin. Uh, yeah, forty. looks like 45 gets you an early car with the right wheels and the or, right color. Oh, with the top. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> but we want like first well, look, year. Here's, a, here's the crate engine sold for sixteen grand. That would have that worked would great in an XJS. XJS. Yeah, an XJS plus sixteen K for a Viper motor. But look mm. at that. Look at the oh sixty grand, seven thousand miles. Yeah, that's, that's a ninety two. Ninety twos are really really rare. That's really good. Ninety threes yeah. are much more common, and they're the same car. So yeah. you want a ninety three or maybe a ninety four? Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, thirty to thirty to forty, 40 gets you in the forty, and it doesn't have to be a great one because we're not gonna no. drive it that much. <laughs> what defines a great Viper, by the way? Well, you know, I know Chris Theodore, who was the chief engineer of this, uh-huh. told me a very funny story. Uh, he told me several very funny stories, but one of them was that you know Shelby drove it as the pace car for the Indy Five Hundred, uh-huh. so they all drove their Vipers down there in the rain. And apparently they're kind of like weirdly okay in the rain, but they had like the the you know the the plastic tops on yeah. them, the rubber whatever. You know, it's like fl- fl- it's like a tent. It's a tent. Yeah. Um, but then on the way back, it was dry, so everybody was like going for it. And he said like th- uh, three of them wound up in a ditch. And this was like the team that built it before they went on oh, sale. No, because that's a. It was actually a third gym. The first car I ever spun. Uh, um, you know, trying to be on a racetrack was a with third gen Viper under braking in a straight line. It just yeah, spun hairy, on me. They're hairy. They really are. There was a there was a great article that was from the early '90s, which is they someone from uh, Road and Track or Car and Driver somewhere took a Viper to Europe. Oh yeah, and went around to the Ferrari factory, the Lamborghini <laughs> factory. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and I think Angus might have done that. That sounds like an Angus thing. But anyway, maybe, go, go ahead. Maybe, it, maybe yeah. it was. He does. But, he does stuff like that. But yeah, yeah. but like, and they let all the engineers for the other companies <laughs> drive it, and they were all like chuckling, but at the same time, like, ha, you know. Not not terrible. I mean, I remember I remember very well that that Viper when I got it right because we were I think we were I was doing like some Skip Barbary stuff and we were I think you know nine nine sixes yeah and then you know three hundred horsepower because I think I don't think they were S's and then you get into the five hundred horsepower Viper and it weighs less yeah <laughs> you know and it's yeah. like bro <laughs> they are they are yeah. a good time yeah have you seen you know the world's second most beat viper the world's most beat viper is the one that lives in marina del rey oh yeah two hundred thousand yes. miles on it yeah, yeah, yeah and yeah. the guy dailies it for 30 years good for him the world's second most beat viper lives right at the base of big tahunga have you seen that one no oh so every time you go you turn off of oh is it green, it's green. Yeah, 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 yeah 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 it's I've a, it. yeah, it's yeah, a yeah. fake acr yes, but it's yes. in like this constant state of body panels being off and back on and that's not the highest income neighborhood in the greater los angeles no area. it's like a yeah, yeah. solidly and middle it lives class. on the street yes yeah yeah, yes. yeah i know that car very it is well yeah pretty yeah. rough but it's a yeah. treat every time i drive <laughs> up the canyon to see it parked out there what's missing today <laughs> what's back on <laughs> like, it's a good 
it is but a good a fake time. ACR is kind of rad. Like that's, I mean, it, if it know. was clean, it wouldn't be the worst thing, and it may eventually. It was be... cleanish, but now it's missing the front bumper. Yeah, it's it was missing, last time. It's we were missing there. some things. So, yeah, well, yeah, a few things here. Gotta, and there. Those fake ACR parts are hard right. to come by. <laughs> but it's like it doesn't matter that it's a fake ACR. It's it's like no. put a fucking ACR wing on a Viper and wheels. Like have at it. But but except the license plate says <laughs> VPRACR, oh. so it's like. You could have just not you done. You could have got fake ACR. Which that would have be been better. That would actually be better. <laughs> that would be fantastic. Self awareness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's I go. Do, to, I, yeah. I was just saying, no, no. I love houses like that. Like I know where I know where a guy has like I think three via crosses. Um, <laughs> yeah. There used to be a dude. I, he had crosses. four nine twenty eights, and three wow. of them had been there since they were sold. Yeah, yeah. You know yeah, what yeah. I mean. One was in the driveway. Three were on the street, and they just live there. I love houses like There's that. There's a guy in my neighborhood over here. That probably has two million dollars in cars parked just in his driveway in front. It looks what, like he's about what, what, to film a rap video at any oh, time. Oh, oh, he's There's, got a, an Aventador. He's got a McLaren 720, a Rolls Royce, uh, a, a Taycan, like a, a Turbo S. There's a Bentley. I mean, it's like it's crazy. The, the number should just parked in front of this guy's I know house. a house kind of like that. There's a dude in La Cunada who, you, when my, my, on the way to my kid's preschool, I'd take this back road sometimes. And he would always have like a G63, a Cullinan, um, high end SUVs, like a TRX. Um, and and he was like redoing the house, and they were all just parked in mud, and it was hysterical. Like 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 you know, uh, uh, GLE sixty three, just yeah. whatever, just big SUVs, always parked in mud. And he'd always have like five, and I was like, what on earth? Because Lockheed Yacht is like this sleepy bedroom community. Nobody. Yeah. Like, like uh, what are you doing? Even up here, though they man? can all afford Cullinans, like yeah. nobody would cut dead in a Cullinan. Yeah, you know? and it was just I'm like I was always want to stop and be like, what are you up to? I literally went and knocked on this guy's door randomly. And? He was very nice. He knew what the smoking tire was. Uh, I asked. I said, "You know, I own a car storage place like, right <laughs> up the road." That was why I wanted. Not. Right, right. I was like, "I can get some business out of this. These yeah. things are all over the fucking right. street." And uh, I gave him my card and never heard from him again. But he, uh, but I. But, but did he say what he does with? I them? didn't inquire, but he said he owns a building somewhere and always is rotating which oh, cars. Okay. Are so oh, that's fair. I, I know. I know guys that do stuff like that. Yeah, but I mean, there's like there were like seven cars in front of his house on the street, and it was like real. He had like a a, a little a cul de sac type driveway that had a fountain in the middle of it that oh, was like yeah. so appropriate. Oh, I I the, where I used to live, there was a dude who had among many other cool things. He had a 50th anniversary 911. Oh yeah, but it had the big fountain in the middle of the driveway, and it was I was always like. And he had weird stuff. He had like a, um, he probably, I mean, there's not many of these people, so I don't know who he is, but he had like a, like a, like a, a Sprinter uh, Airstream and oh, stuff yeah. like that. But he had this bitch the, in the mobile 50th office. anniversary. Yeah, it was so cool. Let's, uh, we got a bunch on the Patreon. Let's do it. So let's yeah. go to let's that. Go, let's go, see let's how go. many of these we can get through. Uh, of course, patreon.com slash the Smoking Tire Podcast. You can get an ad free experience. You can ask us questions for the show. You can get an extra show every month, the, uh, the Pro Driver level show. And a whole lot more. Uh, Retrofit says, I'm looking for an elegant but engaging coupe that seats four comfortably and turn, turns heads at the yacht club under 100K. The nicest yeah. Bentley GT you can find. Uh, mm. Yeah, that's that's good. I mean, like 95000 will get you a pretty nice Bentley GT. I was going to say define comfortably. I know a lot mm -hmm. that will seat mm. four, but, you know, M8. Um, if not the non competition, non yeah, not even MA, but just an eight series, you can probably CL CLs, uh, coops. Oh, oh, yeah, oh, well, CL first of all, coops CL coops are the greatest things ever made, they're pretty yeah, rad. That's yeah, that's actually the best answer. You could probably get a six next, a, 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 yeah, <laughs> yeah use S63. S a couple years S60, old, right? Yeah, S sixty three coupes. Yeah, but yeah. The, but the CLs were special. Yeah, yeah they're, they're, they're delightful. C, if you can find a a CL six five that was rear drive, yeah. and like even though the C, CL six three is probably better, CL six five is like still want you got to have the, yeah baller. it needs to be the yeah. twin turbo V twelve. Mm. Uh, Eric Gagnon says, in your personal car, how often do you adjust the temperature and vent positions? I ask because I change my temperature twice a year and rarely touch the vents. Constantly, All the time. if not, if not uh, on the way here. Probably adjusted the temperature four times in the event, the vent once. Really? 
Yeah. Well, problem with the Rivian is giant glass roof. Uh, uh, even though I tinted it the color of your sweatshirt, uh, it still warms up the car. Yeah. And I, it was different temperatures here in, in my house. So if I set a, if I can if I can find in a car an automatic setting that that works, I pretty much just leave it there. Oh, really? Yeah, usually. But like my like my Porsche does not have automatic. It's just got the fan controller and the hot cold. Yeah. So I find myself fucking with that one all the time. And I share the Ford with my wife. Uh, and I run hot and she runs cold. So we're always playing oh, with the dual zone. I get into my tr- truck or a- either car every time. She has it on 80 degrees, even mm. if it's like summertime. She's like, yeah. oh, I was cold. Yeah. Yeah. So constantly. Uh. Okay, uh, I don't know if I have an answer to Alan's question, but maybe Johnny does. Have you seen the recent investments in internal combustion by the big three, as well as slowing battery plant production expansion? What conditions, in your opinion, are causing this? Is it market-based trajectory, or do you think that EV will eventually be more of a small customer base? No. Uh, look, uh, look. The, the industry is going electric, uh, despite whatever article. There's there's a, there's a strike going on, and and uh, you know so yeah, Ford shut down some of the Lightning stuff, but it's uh, it's all going electric. So um, everything that's happening are, are small hiccups on a road to. Um, vehicles that'll be so much more profitable for the people that make them that they're, they they have no they have no choice. Do you think that customers are not adopting EVs as fast as the OEMs would like them to? No, because they're they're hamstr- they, they couldn't if they did they couldn't supply them. There's there's you know there's all kinds of supply chain issues right now. <clears throat> We're still coming out of the pandemic, and the other thing is look in the U.S. Uh, EVs have been politicized, right? So now it's, there's like a there's like a divide on it. Like I believe Trump won the election, and I hate electric cars. You know, it's kind of like they've they've like married up a little bit. Um, the rest of the world has no qualms about EVs. It's going to be electric. You know, it, it was. You know, we were just reading something with some long-term planning document from an OEM, and it was like, you know, no, no internal combustion whatsoever, and full carbon neutrality by 2045, and then the U.S. should follow by 2050. You know, and it was like we were kind of like, wow, we're, we're only five years behind. Like that's, that sounds far away, and it is far away. Know. It's twenty, it's twenty-seven years away. Yeah, you know, but um, but it's just it's just coming like a it's just it's just coming. You know, it's just like, and, and again, I mean, people can be scared of it, but it's sort of like, you know, in a way, it's like really holding on to your BlackBerry in 2012. I mean, I guess, but like, I have now had an EV for three years, and I will not be getting another one. But you didn't buy a particularly, like, interesting EV. If you bought, like, a more interesting one. No, that's not why I'm getting rid of it. I'm getting rid of it because the public charging network has let my wife down right. so many times right, right, right. that it is not worth Oh, Me, fair. That's it's fair. It's not worth yeah, yeah. We don't need to make the sacrifice. We're going to get a plug-in hybrid. Right. We're going to charge it at home and use electricity for our local errands. Right. And then never have to go to a public charging station ever. Right. Which is how I want it because they fucked up. Not because oh yeah yeah but, know, but, but they've, you know, they've the, let us down. You know, so the, yeah, yeah, hundred percent agree. The public, yeah. the, the infrastructure is horrible. Now that said. You know, last month or two months ago, GM, Hyundai, Kia, BMW, blah, blah, they're going to do a rival to the Tesla uh, supercharger network, which will have 30,000 stations uh, or 30,000 chargers. Um, Tesla's opening up their thing, so you'll be able to charge whatever EV you have at a Tesla system. And, you know, despite whatever you want to say about Tesla, like, their shit works. Well, but... I think it's important to explain why it works. For now, it works because they only have to charge one type of car. Right. And the payment is built into that. They, because the charging is so associated with the car brand, they've invested more in the maintenance and upkeep of them. And so once they open to other cars, it is deeply uncertain if we can expect sure. that level of reliability sure. with other cars. I think with Tesla, if one, my understanding is the reason, one of the two big reasons that uh, current infrastructure sucks so bad has something, I don't, and I had a guy from EVgo explain it to me, and I'm still like, huh? But it's just credit card processing for some reason sucks on chargers. I don't understand why it that make is. Any doesn't make any fucking sense. Doesn't make any fucking sense. But we have solved credit card processing. You would everywhere. think, yeah, because I was telling, I was screaming at the guy. I'm like, I just bought like a 
freaking T-shirt yeah. with my credit card. Like on, yeah. You know, but he says that's the problem. Um, I don't think Tesla. I don't think they're. They, 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 I don't think they use credit card uh, swipey swipes the same way that the. No, other, it's connected through the car. Yeah, it's so, all plug in charge. Yeah, so uh, you know, like you said, it's to be seen. I haven't heard anything because Tesla has opened up certain charges with the Magic Dock. Yeah. I haven't heard of any problems. No, it hasn't been a. There's just not enough other EVs to really like you know flood the Tesla system. Um, it'll happen. We'll, we'll see what happens. Yeah, but I'm just, I, I think there's so many people who just assume that the Tesla chargers will work better because when they're plugged into Teslas, yeah. they work better. Look, but yeah, like, yeah, no, you're right. There's you, no evidence sure, fair. showing that, that uh, <laughs> plugging in my Ford into a Tesla charger will be more reliable than plugging it into an EA charger. Right. But I would just say that the infrastructure thing is a hiccup along the road to electrification. It is. Yeah. But... It's a, it's a significant one. But I until agree. they fucking fix it, I'm, I'm over it. I, I hear you. I, yeah, we, for, for us, the way we use our truck, it doesn't, like, affect that. Like, you know, once in a while... I will forget to charge at home or take a road yeah. trip, but like you know, the 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 Rivian battery is big enough. We can drive to San Diego and back, sure. and not have it, to charge. It doesn't affect us so. right up until it does. Yeah, you know, the, yeah, it's and, a pain and in the butt. Every time I've needed it, it's let me down. Right. Yeah. It's every a, it's time. A, it's a, I mean, yeah. every time. It's shocking. It's it, it's weird that Electrify America is the worst business in the world. Like, yeah. isn't that a funny thing? Like, yeah. like there's so many. Turns others. out, when companies have to start businesses as punishment, they. Don't. But even like, you, like it's like look okay, at everything right now. That the, the way you're hearing us, you charge something to listen, or you're plugged into a wall. Electricity's flowing into yeah. Zach's laptop, which is recording it through the board. Electricity's easy. Yeah, you know they make it hard. Like yeah. we just need dumber charges. And it's not. Yeah, it's not. The elect, it's not the flowing of the electricity. No, no, it's, it's not. It's a, it's a purely customer service. Yeah, and it's issue. not. It's not. What, and a lot of people are like see the grid can't handle. It. It's not that. There's plenty of electricity. It's tons of electricity. Not a problem. It's just, it's the charging companies. Yeah, and so they they've totally fucked it up. So yeah. I I cannot yeah. critique you on that. Yeah, um, I, I'll, I'm sure I'll get another electric car eventually. But yeah. I'm not going to sacrifice my fucking convenience at the altar of this. No, I, I hear you. Now. Yeah, I hear you. And Certainly not when I can do 90% of my everyday driving on battery, charging from home, sure. and then just never have to use it when I want to go to Vegas or when I want to go to San Diego or when I want yeah, 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 to San yeah. Francisco, you know? Uh, and it's not even me, because I'll fucking deal with it, because even if it's shit, the content, I can't have my wife calling me from fucking Carlsbad yeah, yeah, going, yeah, yeah, yeah. this charger isn't working. Like, I, no. Yeah, I, I mean, I've been lucky. I think one time my wife was, like, in Temecula, and she's like, the hotel charger's broken. What do I do? Yeah. And I'm like, here's what you do. Yeah. And, you know, she went to an EA or whatever, and she was able to charge, and it worked. Yeah. But, no, I, yeah, it can be. I mean, look, you, we both do this. We've done that. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's misery. Uh, James says, where do you draw the line driving an old car on the freeway? Contemplating driving my Myers Manx on the freeway, but haven't been able to muster the courage to take it down there. What car would you not dare to drive on an open freeway? See, I, here's the crazy thing. F to me, freeways are the safest place to drive because there's no uh, oncoming traffic. There's no one turning at you. Mm. So as long as you can like put around 55 in the you know the the very right lane, yeah, or the speed limit, it's it's totally safe. It's like I worry about like having to stop and turn and other cars coming at you. Yeah, I mean, mm. I I probably if a car can't sustain 60 comfortably, I probably wouldn't do it. Like yeah. I probably wouldn't drive like a Willie's Jeep or something on the freeway. No. but like I have, um, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this long-term loan of this Cake e-bike thing that goes 60 miles an hour. It's sketchy at 60, but it, I, I've, but it will do it. It, it will do. Yeah. I would never in a hundred thousand years take that on the freeway because it just, it, it just. Yeah. I rode my Honda Monkey on the freeway. What's which, that go? Which max, max, max is 62. Okay. Max. Yeah, so and similar. it was mildly shady. And yeah, yeah. So I just, I've just avoided doing it. Yeah. You could do it. But yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I and then there's one thing that's like, you know, novelty for a minute, and then there's another thing that's like a car I owned, like a Manx. I'd probably drive a Manx on the freeway. You could it's do, probably yeah, okay. you could you could do it, yeah. But like Hannah's Pow, which has 57 <laughs> horsepower, yeah, in like 
uh, five miles on the freeway maybe is like okay, but I probably wouldn't go. Do you much know? Do you know? You guys know Johnny Eisen? He's one of the curators at the Peterson. Uh-uh. He had a Subaru 360, which yeah. I think was oh. 40 horsepower, yeah. and we took that on the 134 in Glendale for like an exit. And it was shady, right? I mean, like pedal to the metal, yeah. 50 miles an hour, and it's about to just keel over and die. It's like yeah. a two-speed, yeah. two-cylinder, <laughs> two-stroke, two-speed, you know. So that was, yes, Subaru 360, anything faster than that, you're good. Yeah. Uh, and real quick, an insurance agency cited there are more accidents on surface streets, but the accidents on freeways, as we know, are more severe. Right. So yeah. you're speed playing the odds, sure. yeah. yeah. I just I always think, I think of freeways as safe. Yeah. Uh, Matt says, have you ever owned a watch that felt like too much? And do you have any tips to get over that feeling? Last Christmas, I bought a root beer GMT. Uh, it was a grail. I adore it. However, I hardly wear it because it's not suited to my day job. And I have imposter syndrome that I didn't earn it. Fair thoughts? Uh, I, I, You know, it's, it's funny. Like, I, it's, you know, uh, I, I heard Ralph Lauren talking about this once where he was saying something about how when he puts on like a Western outfit, it's okay. Even though he's not really a cowboy, it's fine because it, it just doesn't really matter that much. And he's a famous um, clothing, <laughs> clothing designer. <laughs> he's, a famous, he's a famous cowboy. No, I just want to tell yeah. Matt. I just want to explain to Matt who he is. When, why, when I heard yeah. Reuven Lipschitz say, yeah. um, no, but like, I, I remember, I tell this story a lot, but like uh, for, for my, when my wife graduated from law school, I was, we were going, she graduated from UCI, so we're going to Newport Beach for a week. And I said, hey, Mercedes, uh, give me a G-Wagon for a week. Yeah. You know, it was going to be fun, in Lazarin town, great car, blah, blah. So I get the alien green G65. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I'm walking out to it, and I just start laughing because it's, it's such a ridiculous color. Yeah. The first day I had it, everyone was staring at me like I'm a Kardashian, you know, with like yeah. a, a bit of interest, but also a lot of disdain. Yeah. Within a week, I'd forgotten, like, it was just the greatest car of all time, easy to find in a parking lot. Sure. So I've never had that, and I've worn, I've never owned, but I've worn some very expensive watches. Um, so no is my long-winded way of saying no. I've, I mean, I definitely can re- can relate. Like if you're if you're if you're in a sort of a blue collar gig and you're rolling up in a thirty thousand dollar watch, like yeah, okay, that's a little you know maybe mismatched. Or if you're in if you're in you know if I'm doing something like dirty or rough, I'm not going to bring out something heavy, but. Um, and I did have an AP Royal Oak that I felt like well, it was like close. wearing that's, a that's disco ball. Close. Yeah, that's you know, it was close. so like the way it caught the light was so reflective that I was like, I'm a little insecure about this. Um, and that's a big price tag watch too. It's a big price tag watch. Yeah. Um, but I understand. But at the same time, I try to think about the fact that like. Ninety-five percent of the world isn't really looking at your watch and doesn't really know what it is. And if it makes you happy, it doesn't matter if it's an inheritance or a gift from somebody or if you earned it. If it's special in some way, it's, it's okay. Can, can I close it's also this? okay, by the way, to to have a daily beater and then a special watch for a special occasion. Totally That's okay too. Totally. If I can just close this out, so Jay Lamb, you know, from yeah. uh, Twenty Four Hours of Lemons. We spent a lot, that Moser I was showing you, mm-hmm. we spent a lot of time sending pictures of watches to each other. Yeah. And he writes me out of the blue the other day, I'm in bed wearing a solid gold Patek Philippe and experiencing nonstop reverberous flatulence. Life is incredibly strange. <laughs> right. So even if you're farting constantly, <laughs> farting in a gold Patek makes you feel better about your There's life. There's something else Something there. to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I understand, but it's okay to to wear it once in a while. Yeah. Ryan says, this is an interesting question. Does GM innovate? Uh, the review of the Z06 fo- focused heavily on being a reverse engineered 458, and the E-Ray discussion focused on its relation to the NSX that came out years ago outside of MagRide. I'm curious if I'm missing something or if they're always playing catch up. Well, it's a I mean, fair question. It's a fair question. I, yeah, I think they innovate like crazy. I mean, MagRide's one thing, but then like their ELSD, their electronic locking, uh, limited slip differential, whatever, wild. Like, you know, why mm. Why is the Corvette Camaro and the, the Black Wing so good? That, that rear end has a lot to do with it. They do massive innovation there. You know, uh, their, their engines are incredible. Like, that's the largest flat plane crank engine ever developed. Um, that's, pr- I don't know. I think that's pretty innovative. Uh, and then, you know, if you, I don't know, I know the guy's not going to care, but like what they're doing with the Ultium batteries is like really cool. Like the Blazer, 
you can you know you can order a Blazer front drive, all wheel drive, or rear drive. Name another car. I think there was a Ford Transit van commercial yeah. use that could do that. But like, that's pretty innovative, and that means you can sell it at like eight, seven different price points. Yeah, and I also think that to there's innovation in taking very advanced technologies and making them affordable also. I mean, the fact that the E-Ray has a hybrid system that's very similar to what you would see in much more expensive cars, but it's slightly simplified and it's in a much more affordable car, that is innovative. I would 100% agree. Like the C8, not even fair about the Z06, just the regular C8. Yeah. You know, if you do a big group test where you're running around with like Lamborghinis and Ferraris, you start jumping into the Corvette and into the Lamborghini, they feel real similar. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like, like they move around the same as you know and it's like whoa this is a third the price yeah like that's we've also praised gm's chassis setup and engineering for what i don't know 20 years alpha platform zeta like the construction of their cars and then what they do with those shells is usually even with the bar or beyond it of bmw audi mercedes you know high level stuff and And super cruise super cruise is is, is probably the best hands-free system without in my mind without question i I would also say ptm performance traction management while it's a few years old that was before mercedes had the system in Uh the 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 gtr Mm -hmm. you know with the with the 10 steps yeah gm had the five steps and like man i was screwing around with the z06 uh a couple weeks ago and like race one, I think like it's unbelievable. Like like I didn't know it was it was intervening because I turned everything off. It was like whoa, <laughs> like mm-hmm. but I had no idea. Like normally you can feel when cars catch you. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean. But this was yeah. The you... race modes in those cars are very good. Yeah, it'll let you go. I think it was doing like fifteen degrees of yaw uh-huh. and catching it. But to me, I felt like an absolute hero right, because it's not the yaw angle alone. It's the rate of changing yaw that it plays with. Yeah, which and is really I neat. forget if it was if I was in race one or race two. But it doesn't matter. But the point is like that is super yeah. innovative, and they yeah. had that now. Here's GM's problem, if I, if I may. They hide that shit. That oh, was by own... the way, the Volt. The Volt oh, was super. possibly the best passenger car of all time leading to the that Volt point. The Volt was way, way ahead of the game. Yeah. Like, like a decade ahead. Yeah. Um, but like, but the, they hide their technology, right? Like, PTM was in the C6, but you know how you accessed it? You did a click and a half yeah. on the traction control, which yeah. then, if and you had to do the right meter. Like, it was a yeah, drum they beat. buried it. And, yeah, if, yeah. And, and I remember sitting there with the guys, and I'm like... Come here. Yeah. This is a Mercedes. You see this knob? If you twist it, you go to race mode. And it was yellow. I remember yeah, the one yeah. of the AMG well, GR Pro was, was yellow. That. This oh, is just, just a regular AMG, you know, and I'm like, I'm like, why is this hidden? Yeah, yeah. And then, it, you know, and, and they were like, eh, you know. Yeah. Like, and I think it's because, like, they have these wonderful engineers. Like, do you know this? GM is not allowed to test at Laguna Seca. Their lawyers say... Because it's a public park that they they can't test oh, at Laguna funny. Seca. Okay. So when we would do stuff at Laguna Seca, seventeen engineers would show up and be like, oh. "Could we have a lap?" Oh, that's funny. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know that. You know what, what I mean? That? So yeah, I think yeah. they're they just even though they do racing and yeah. like Mark Royce and Mary Bear are super into what they're doing at Le Mans. Mm-hmm. I just think they're really held back. You know, so I think they could innovate more. Yeah, and they they also do stuff that's lazy and not innovative. But yeah, but yeah, but, sure. But I think. Right, let's recognize the things that they do yeah. that are good. And, and a lot of that, I think, and you're going to see this with a lot of companies. I think a lot of old wood is going to get kind of sure. tossed out to sea and you know, bring in the, what can these software geeks do? My friend came over to my house the other night, has not, not into cars, doesn't give a shit, but he's like, I think I want to get the new Accord Hybrid. And I go, okay, cool. It's you know probably nice. And he goes, it does this amazing thing. He's like, the engine's not connected to the to the to the drive wheels. He's like, it's an electric car, but then the engine's just a generator. And I was like, the Volt did that 14 years no, ago. Not only that, the Volt <laughs> like, did that, and the Volt could connect through a planetary gear set yeah, to, the, yeah. to the traction motor. Yeah, yeah the Volt was so there. The Volt now, was people wild. think that things that Honda is doing now that GM did 13, and 14 the I3. years ago. Talk yeah, about that too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, um, oh, Ivan. God. I don't love this question in general, but it's not your fault. I understand why you're asking it. Where do we draw the line between sporty cars, sports cars, exotic cars, supercars, and hypercars? It seems like everything has insane speed and handling, and technology has made it different, difficult to distinguish 
uh, features. I mean, it's a, whatever senator that was who said, like, I can't define pornography, but I know it when I see it. Yeah. So when I see a Bugatti, I know that's a hypercar. When I see a uh, Lamborghini Huracan, I know that's a supercar. Right. You know what I mean? So to I me, don't know. I don't, this is arbitrary, and it's just my scale. Hypercar is seven figures. Oh. Over, over a million bucks, no, we're talking about a hypercar. That's fair. I like um, that. Supercars are, you know, really over over $200,000, you know. I'll, I'll take that. I think that's kind of where I do it. Sports cars are uh, usually two-seat or two-plus-two-seat at any price point. And exo- ex- I'd say exotic cars really Cause, over, cause over 100, 150,000. Yeah, because the Rolls, which is not a sports car by any means. Right. The Rolls like Royce exotic is exotic. Car, yeah. yeah, exotic car is any car that's over. They overlap, and right? And part of that is brand and, yeah. and, you know, all that. But I would just say, like, yes, all everything you said is right. Lines are blurred because, like, a, like a Porsche GT3, for right. instance, really blurs the line between sports car and supercar right. because numerically – it can kind of do what all the supercars do. Is it a, is a GT3 a supercar? Uh, it could go either way. I, yeah, it could yeah, go yeah, either way. Yeah, I wouldn't call it that. I would but say, I, a, but if someone did, I wouldn't like. Nah, you know. Yeah, you know. It, 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 but again, the word supercar came from uh, uh, Jay. Uh, what's his face? Set right. Jay. Oh, LKJ. Jay, Jay, Set LKJ. Right, yeah. Set right. Yeah. Looking at the mirror and saying, "That's a super. That's not a car. That's a supercar." Sure. Yeah, that's where the word came from. And Angus McKenzie claims that when the Veyron came out, he came up with the word hypercar. To describe it. He said, it used to be supercars. Now we're in the era of hypercars. Now, it was the first seven-figure production car. Yeah, I'll, so give, him, I'll give him that. Yeah, give yeah. it to him. Uh, Flannel Bob said, if you had the perfect car to match the styling of your home from the year it was built, what would it be? Wow. What a wild. Yeah. My house was built in 1926. Okay. <laughs> so Model A. Brand new for that year. I would go with a Bentley, uh, 1926 Bentley uh, uh, six and a half liter. No, four and a half liter. Six liter. Six liter. Mm-hmm. Would, it look, would it look good parked in your driveway, you think? My house? Yeah, it'll kill her. It looks good parked in my driveway. <laughs> uh, my house was is mid-century modern. It was Ooh. built in 1964. And uh, so 63 Corvette. I, I, my first thought was a split window vet. Uh, I don't know if that matches the mid century modern. It might, it might have to be like a caddy or something a little more Palm Springs or, uh, yeah, something like a little more cruiser if we wanted to match the house. But definitely that, like, that space. Age American, right. maybe one of those space cowboy T birds. Oh, yeah, Remember yeah, when yeah, it was yeah. on the outside? They thought they were going to space, and on yeah. the inside, they wanted to be cowboys. It was one of those. Yeah. What, would you remember the 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 weird Chevy? I think they were called uh, El Mirage. They were uh, like Chevys that so I think it was a dealer made them as fancy. They, they put Cadillac interiors into like oh, fifty seven Chevys in fifty seven. Oh, I didn't. It was see like that. the El Mirage dealership. Yeah, oh, they're, cool. They're wild things. Yeah. Like that's that, that might work. Yeah. Jack says uh, for a person with no track experience at all and a car that cannot do <laughs> autocross or track work, what is the cheapest way to improve driving skill and spend some time on a track? Uh, Zach, did you write sim racing there? Well, one of our patrons responded, but I agree with that entirely. Sim racing will help. It'll help. Uh, you could go to a driving school that has their own cars. Almost I, all I, of them do. I would say 100%. That's the was a thousand bucks, fifteen hundred bucks. I'm probably out of out of touch with it. But driving like, school is like thirteen hundred a day now. I yeah. mean, it's, rally school. Actually, karting school. I looked it up. In, there's a kart school in Ventura, but that is the cheapest per day. For like racing, school. the only That's thing I'd say time. is uh, karting. You know, it does favor the little guy, but also, um, you know, you're in a cart, not a car. And I think there's a, I think there's a big advantage to physically being in a production car mm-hmm. and seeing how a car works on a track. Because like, yeah. a cart, you know, you steer with the rear end. That's yeah, not yeah, how yeah. you drive a car. Yeah, um, yeah. I think I think those like uh, Radford. And Skip Barbers and, and schools like that. And then you said uh, uh, Rally School. Rally School. If you want to learn car control, overall car control, Rally School. Yeah. If you want to learn race craft, then racing school. But even just, the, you know, they, they have, um, like, high-performance driving classes yeah. at, at, like, uh, places like that, uh, Radford or whatever. And uh, they're, they're great. Because, you know, a lot of – most people, you don't realize this, they've never, like, jumped in a car – and just floored it with her eyes shut for three seconds. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, what's what's that do? You yeah, know, what I mean? like yeah, that's yeah. a good thing to to experience. Yeah. yeah. 
Uh, Michael Cosgrove says Johnny tends to have different preferences in car attributes versus me and Zach. Uh, if so, what stock Porsche on sale today do the three of you find the most enjoyable to drive? Well, I can come up with two off the top of my head. Uh, so GT3 manual for like canyons and mm -hmm. racetrack and then uh, Targa for everything else. Uh, I'd go Spider for everything else, and okay, for spider, dedicated driving, yeah. 911 ST. Uh, you know better. what? Spider's really good, too. I was only thinking 911. Yeah, if I had to leave it stock, I'd probably go Spider RS. Yeah, I haven't driven the RS yet. It's, it's exactly what you think it is. Oh, yeah. how's the ST, by the way? I'm sure you've talked about it plenty, but... I mean, hugely different from the, <clears throat> from the touring. Like, yeah. shocking. And sure. going back to, I think we were talking about this before, all they did was reprogram the shocks for a year. Uh -huh. I mean, they changed a little hardware, but springs are the same, dampers are the same. It's just wild how yeah. different it feels. Again, 911s, like the fact that you can keep slicing that cake forever. It's insane. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's insane. Yeah. But yeah. I, mean, I, I drove a 911R back to back with a GT3 manual, and like it, they just didn't even feel like the same species. Right. Yeah. You know. So they're, they're, they say there will be STs in the fleet maybe quarter one. So yeah. I was, get I was, on talking, that list. I was talking with Luke sure. just yesterday. Yeah. Or I, Monday, yeah. Monday, I'm, yeah. I'm definitely poking the bear on yeah. that one. Yeah, too. yeah, yeah. Uh, Bad Gardener says if you found yourself in the market for a high end boutique car, what would be your choice and then suggest the Tuttle 911K and Icon Singer Touring Radford Singer uh, for sure my heart would go torn between Icon FJ mm -hmm. and a roof mm. because oh, the roof roofs are, like are literally the best yeah. period yeah. now it's another 911 at the end of the day yeah let's no he didn't say 911 he said high-end boutique yeah, car I'm, I'm saying that's what the, the, it's another 911 and you know there is, yeah if, if any cars played out it is the porsche 911 mm -hmm. um and i love that icon i'd be torn i'd be torn luckily the people that can afford those they can just buy both so it's yeah not i don't know if i could fit in it but that that Chimera thing, which is the Lancia 037 that is repop, sick. which actually um, Catchpole drove it, and he's as taller than me, and he fit. He's also he's a also third 180, your weight. Yeah, yeah, 180, 180. pounds. 180. He's 150. He's very thin. Yes. Uh, I don't know. He's if mostly sideburn in that, but um, <laughs> but that seems quite without ever driving it. I would say that seems that, very delightful. That's, that is literally gorgeous. Insane. But look at that. I mean, come Whoa. on. Tell me that uh, doesn't look fucking awesome. So I drove the um, what the Amos uh, the. Um, the, the Delta, Delta Integrale, the one, yeah, right. Phenomenal, yeah. Like they're neat, dude. Like what a what a great car, yeah. You know? Like 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 yeah. The four hundred thousand dollars is sort of nuts for what it is, but what a great car, yeah. And this has to be better, but I, I like that. Um, I'm gonna breeze through. I don't want. I'm not gonna do every single one. I want to. I want to pick the best ones. Okay. Uh, Tough Ode, is the new SL a flop for Mercedes? I'm yes. seeing new cars with 30K off. Yeah, it's super flop. And used ones for 50 to 60K under the MSRP. Super flop. I'll tell you what, if you can get one for, with 1,500 miles for 60K off, that's not a bad deal. But, Do you yeah. think that's, you know, The new AMG stuff? GT I mean, is a good. super flop because it's an SL with a hard top and no Whoa, thank that you. That one's worse. The, the new SL, I felt like drove great, looked much better than the old one. Whereas no. the new I thought AMG. it drove a little weird, but uh, yeah. but it, it, it was weird in the canyons. Great. It was weird in the canyons. It was nice on the highway. It just doesn't know what it is. Yeah. it's just like the most confused thing ever. Like, who wants an SL with a rear seat? No one. Yeah, like no that, one. That's a, that doesn't make any sense. I, look, here's what happened, right? So Mercedes made an SL. They made an AMG GT convertible. They made an S convertible. They made a E convertible. Yeah. And, convertibles, and, a C convertible. and a C convertible, and convertibles are less than 1% of the car market. Yeah. So they're like, what are we doing? Like, yeah. let's just make one. Well, you know, boy, you know, you're designing a camel. You know, a camel is a horse designed by committee. Yeah. They made a camel. And it weighs, like, way too much. And why is it all-wheel drive? Who wants an all-wheel drive SL with a rear? It just makes no sense. Yeah. Plus the haptic stuff is out of control in that yeah. car. Big There's flop. a lot going don't, on. You there. don't know your like again that that 
that user base is like in their 60s. Yeah, and it's like, too complicated. You got to hold down a virtual button to lower the top. Fuck that off. Is terrible. Yeah, that was crazy. Fuck yeah. off. Yeah, that or, was crazy. Or hold the screen. And then to replace the AMG GT with just a hard top version of the SL is like double decker flop. Which also looks just like a Porsche Turbo. Like literally looks, it's, it's wild. If you look at the rear. You got to look at the rear. Look really? at the rear of the new SL. Okay. It, it's just, tur- I, was stand- I was standing with uh, this guy named Horatio Pagani. And he's like, <laughs> I'm like, don't you see a turbo? He's like, I understand why they would do that. It's a very successful car. <laughs> <laughs> very pragmatic. Yeah. Uh, Patrick McCoy says, Johnny, what's your favorite bourbon and cigar combo oh, recently? Oh, whatever I'm smoking tonight. Um, honestly, with my cockamamie diet, I'm I'm not drinking a lot. Uh, yeah. That's it, a good way to. Yeah, it is, way, is a great way to. Look, I mean, my favorite bourbon, um, you know, is either Willet, uh, 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 certain uh, Willet bottles, or William Larue Weller. Oh yeah. Um, I remember at your birthday, mm-hmm. we had some insane, mm-hmm. insane uh, Larue Wellers. Very Wellers. nice. Yeah. And I mean, oh, favorite cigar. I, I mean, I, I smoked this thing by Tatuaje called the Face, which I think came out in 2013. Smoked it the other night and like. My friend Mark and I smoked it, and we're both just like, couldn't imagine a better cigar. He's texting me the next morning like, oh, dude, I'm still like geeked on that cigar, you know. All right. Um, the face, huh? Yeah, yeah. Okay. The, but, it, but it's, I mean, yeah, I was literally talking to the guy that owns Tatuaje. I'm like, could, could, are any left? He's like, I have some. If you come to my house, maybe I'll give you one. Sure. That's how you have to get them. Uh, so. Chris N. says, what sports car has surprisingly bad brakes? Two come to mind for me. Uh, SLR. And the 2013 14 Shelby GT500. Oh, well, the, terrible break. There's many surprisingly bad things about the 2014. Yeah, no. I mean, I would say like Lamborghinis and uh, SVJ um, to me had very, like, again, the car's capable of like way over 200 miles an hour. And on tracks, you're seeing stupid speeds and the brakes were sketchy. I never, I never liked those. Um, MC20. MC20. MC20 Those were surprising. had poor brakes. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. true. Yeah. yeah, they're not good. Uh, there's one, Otherwise, a very nice car. There's one more. Yeah, MC20 is a that's They're a delightful. Nice car. That's delightful. A, that's just a, not a track a, car, but as a no. street car, delightful. Killer. Uh, yeah. yeah, I'd say the SVJ. Oh, and most Ferraris. I, I should say that. Uh, all Ferraris until the Roma, I think, had bad brakes. And then the Roma 296, 296 is good. 296 yeah. is great. Yeah. 296 might be the best car I've ever driven. The, we had the Assetto Fiorano oh, for Picotti, and it uh, was nasty. Really, I, really nasty. I, I I love that. I mean, you know, I don't know what it is about Ferrari, but, like, God damn, that's a good car. It's yeah, just the, a the, good car. The, dry, the dynamics of it are just about perfect. Yeah. Yeah. The interface, not so much, but that's okay. Oh, whatever. But, yeah. no, I, I remember, like, when I, 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 I drove one, and I, I was up at uh, Good Vibes, and, like, you know, a bunch of guys, don't you think it would be better without a hybrid system? And I'm like, you know, I know you've never driven it because you're asking that question. Yeah, like, the hybrid system works. Oh, it does work. Kicks ass. Yeah, it's yeah, good. Yeah. I, don't, I don't hate the hybrid system no. at all. You don't it's even fine. know it has one. Yeah, it, it just, just makes it invisible. It just makes over 800 horsepower. <laughs> so fast. It so is fast. so fast. And it does phenomenal slides oh, on incredible. the track. I mean, it was the easiest car to drift I've maybe I've ever slid. I, it was it's, awesome. It's, I think it's the best car. Ever. If I'm being really honest, I think it's the best car I've ever driven. It's rad. The one we yeah. had at Picotti and I haven't even driven that. hundred thousand dollars. Yo, I haven't even We're, driven that one. I just drove the one with like a leather roof. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, the Assetto <laughs> Fiorano with like carbon everything was five hundred thousand dollars. It was yeah, crazy. I mean, it's kind of worth it. Oh, and uh, last one, uh, Red Zed from last week's show uh, asked this, and I said to come back with it because you have experience oh, yeah, 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 looking yeah. at a Fiesta ST with eighty-five thousand miles. What should I look out for? <laughs> one with forty thousand miles. <laughs> Uh, I mean, look, I loved that Fiesta ST, but the, one of the big reasons I got rid of mine was that I w- the surprise two to four thousand dollar bill every few thousand miles was just it what just went, took all what the went fun. wrong? Every fucking thing. Oh, really? I the air conditioner broke, and like it, 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 it was funny because it was like I was pulling into a parking lot, and I was like, "Ooh, that felt weird." And then when I was leaving, I'm in first gear, and it's like car just feels. Totally strange. I'm shifting a second, and it dies, and it's locked up, and oh. I can't get the engine to turn over. It was the AC. Somehow that made that happen. But it took, like, 
eight weeks to diagnose. They were quoting me a new engine price, which was like eight grand. Oh, yeah, no And thanks. I'm like, well, no, I don't want to do that. And then they're like, oh, it turns out it's just the AC, but, you know, all in. And, and with the bro deal from our boy Bo, Bo was like 1800 bucks. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, like, without the bro deal, it probably would have been 2500 um, there was like some rattle and they're like, we just got to take the whole dashboard apart. And it was like $2,000 exploratory surgery. Couldn't figure out what they, they put it back together and stopped rattling. Oh, everything, you know, clutch went out at 25,000 miles for no reason. You know, like I wasn't doing my wife mostly drove it. So 85,000 miles. Remember that started as a $13,000 car. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like I love them. God bless them. But eighty five thousand. Great to drive, and I owned Terrific. one new for thirty thousand miles, and I did. We didn't have any problems. But I've heard when they get up there, there can be. Some Mine stuff. probably had forty by the end, but even even before that, it was just starting to really come apart. Okay, you know? and mine was a little tuned, um, and uh, I just wasn't happy. Right. Fair but, enough. Yeah. yeah. Uh, thanks for joining us for this sober show. I know we're boring. I know, oh, right? Boring, Afternoon, skinny, sober shows, skinny. Yeah, talk lots about, of coffee. Talking about working out. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, uh, inevitable podcast. Yep. Spikes Car Radio. Yeah. Motor Trend. Yeah. Head to Glucker. Head to Glucker. Uh, head to Glucker. <laughs> <laughs> we we had we had a, we had a good one coming out. We have our holiday episode coming out, which we had like 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 um, Lucky and Alex from Hawk Rock Garage, Amir and Nads from Super Street Garage. Um, those guys, uh, Newburn and Cotton. So the show used to be Faster with Finnegan. Now it's oh. called Faster with Newburn and Cotton. These two are hysterical. Okay. I don't know where they found them. They're ridiculously funny guys. But awesome. They're, they're great. All right. Good and time. so we did a big, like, all kinds of stuff, Z06 and all kinds of fun stuff. Good. All yeah, right. Well, next cool. time we'll have a nighttime drunk screaming show. That'll be fun, too. <laughs> Just what we need. Yeah, yeah. Every, every once a year. <laughs> this is the quarterly sober show and right. then the annual screaming show. Right. Well, I do. I still like some bourbon, so we could yeah, yeah, definitely yeah. make that There'll happen. Be, there could be more. Right. Uh, thanks for listening, folks. Thank you to our patrons for, uh, for uh, doing what you do, supporting the program over here. And I'll see you fools next week.